chairperson with the following secretaries as chairpersons of the four distinct yet mutually reinforcing thematic areas, namely Secretary DOST for Disaster Prevention and Mitigation, <coughs> Secretary of the ILG for Disaster Preparedness, <coughs> Secretary of DSWD for Disaster Response, and Secretary of NEDA for Disaster Rehabilitation and Recovery, which all gear towards a single vision, a safer, adaptive, and disaster resilient Filipino communities towards sustainable development. <coughs> Truth be told, ours is a framework that has been loaded and recognized by international organizations and institutions, including the United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction and global non-government organizations <coughs> as a model for its DRR leadership and for its multi-stakeholder multi cooperation. While we have accomplished great strides as a nation, there still lies the fact that much is still is to be done in terms of how we handle the DRRM practices in the country. <coughs> but as we say, when it comes to addressing a problem, we must dig the roots instead of just hacking the leaves. Hence today, we ask the chairman and vice chairpersons of the four thematic areas themselves, is our NDRRM framework effective? Are the institutional arrangements established under RA 10121 efficient? <coughs> How are we performing as we strive to accomplish the set objectives and long-term goals of each thematic area? What <coughs> barriers or challenges hamper the full realization of the promises of Republic Act 10121? In terms of our financial investment, more than 259 billion pesos for the past 10 years in NDRRM funds and QRF. One relevant question that needs to be addressed is, have we infused enough for disaster risk reduction in terms of economic losses from disasters which is equivalent to 4% of GDP? How much resources have we set aside for rehabilitation and recovery. This is not taking into account the LDRRM funds that con constitute at least 5% of all sources of revenues of LGUs from their local revenues and internal revenue allotment, 575 billion in 2019 alone. Have we invested enough in our DRR research? Further, it is acknowledged that our local government units are the frontliners in our disaster risk reduction strategy. Is the risk governance of our LGUs significantly strengthened? Have we provided sufficiently both technical and financial assistance to our LGUs to increase their disaster risk reduction capacity? Disaster risk reduction is a shared responsibility. It is thus crucial that our disaster risk reduction strategy is inclusive and all of society. But is our current DRR framework inclusive? What is our engagement with the relevant stakeholders? Are the roles of the non-state stakeholders in our disaster risk reduction strategy clearly defined? For example, if a department of Disaster Resiliency or Department of, Dis uh, Department of Disaster and Emergency Management of, or whatever <coughs> name we may call it, the, these questions arise. You know. There are agencies under the different departments. Are we going to uproot or pull out these agencies under the different departments? And there, there's a lot. You know. For example, Pag-asa under DOST, yung FIVOX under DOST, Bureau of Fire and Prevention, uh, and Pre Prevention uh, under DILG, Health Emergency Management Bureau under DOH, Climate Change Office, Geohazard Assessment and Engineering, Geology Section under the Mines and Geosciences uh, Bureau, <coughs> Disaster Response Assistance and Management Bureau of DSWD. Ito bang lahat ng mga agencies, kung uh, magtatayo tayo ng standalone department, 
ipupull out natin to be uh, absorbed by the new department. This is, these are questions that, did, that need to be addressed before we even embark on uh, creating a new department, which most of our colleagues, 14 of them, filed uh, separate uh, bills ano, in this regard, the creation of a new department. Uh, NHA, under HATSI, or the newly created uh, and newly activated Department of Human Settlements. Ito po yung mga, mga tanong na dapat natin i-address before we even uh, consider uh, coming out with a committee report, you know, uh, creating uh, an entirely new department to address uh, disaster management. So with that, <coughs> uh, first I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Vice Chair of the Committee on National Defense and Security, uh, <coughs> Senator uh, Francis Tol Tolentino. Magandang maga po. So, yon. <coughs> now, I, I go back to my previous question kanina. Yung present setup <coughs> and the RRM framework, is it effective? The ND muna. Or maybe Yusek Halad? O si the uh, uh, administrator, please. Sir, uh, may I be allowed to read my uh, paper? Yes, sir. Be very honest. Don't be, uh, don't be pressured. Don't be harassed. Kung ano yung thinking ninyong dalawa sa DND, you answer very truthfully. Because in, during the last hearing, I, I, uh, I noticed that you were reluctant in some of your responses. But then, uh, in the course of the uh, questioning by some senators, somehow you change your, uh, your tune. Ano? So, wag kang matakot. Anyway, sige. Very truthfully. Yes, sir. First, I would like to thank the Senate for responding to the call of the President for the passage of a bill creating a department which will handle uh, disaster resiliency. The existence of 14 versions in the Senate represents the interest and commitment of the Senate to support the President in his call. By virtue of uh, Republic Act 10121, the OCD has been mandated to administer a comprehensive national civil defense and disaster risk reduction and management program by providing leadership in the continuous development of strategic and systematic approaches, as well as measures to reduce the vulnerabilities and risks to hazards and manage the consequences of disasters. Even prior to its passage into law, even prior to the passage of uh, RA 10121 into law, OCD was in existence since 1954, and for the past 65 years, it has been in in conspicuously leading and transforming the disaster resilience efforts of the country by deftly coordinating the programs, plans, and actions of the government actors and its stakeholders. The operative word here, sir, is coordination, and it is anchored on our multi-stakeholder, interagency, and top-down, bottom-up approaches. While we support the creation of a department and absorption of the, some of the disaster management functions of DSWD in, and DOH into the proposed DDR, we maintain the need for the retention of a national council to be known as Disaster Resilience Council. It would be beneficial as it serves as a good platform to ensure coherence of critical policies and convergence of actions to give life to a whole of government and whole of society approach in building disaster resilience. The retention of a council, if not led by the cabinet secretary or the executive secretary, will not only maintain the gains but further strengthen the institutional arrangement among government agency. In this light, the head of the department may serve as the vice chair and continue to serve as the executive arm and secretariat of the council. Our model for this year is to cite a few are Malaysia and Mongolia that have their deputy prime minister ahead of the, as head of their national disaster management councils. In my engagement with my counterpart in Mongolia, he admitted that their model was Republic Act 10121, but they saw the weakness of the structure, and that is the structure of the NDRMC headed by a cabinet secretary. So 
they made the head of that council hire the deputy prime minister. Disaster resiliency is everybody's goal. It cannot be attained by one department alone. It can be attained through our whole of society approach, through our whole of government and interagency approach and top-down, bottom-up approach. For example, sir, is the our concept of national security, which has various dimensions. It is said the National Security Council is headed by the president with as members the cabinet secretaries and heads of agencies representing different national dimensions. We don't have a department known as Department of National Security. We have a, a Department of National Defense which represents only one aspect or dimension of national security. Lastly, is my reservation on the capacity of the DDR to address risk reduction. To highlight, during the, after the earthquake in Mindanao, we recorded 99,065 damaged houses, 34,000 of which were totally damaged. We also recorded 2,480 damaged schools, 47 of which were totally damaged. From Taipon Tisoy, we recorded 558,844 damaged houses, 63,466 of which were totally damaged, and 2,249 damaged houses, damaged uh, schools, rather. So from this, we can identify issues or underlying causes. One maybe is poverty, and of course, that leads to non-observance of the building standards poor or non and non-observance of CLUPs. And this, the issuance of building permits is done by the local chief executives. The formulation of CLUPs or comprehensive land use plans is done by the local government units. And these are approved by either the governors, provincial governors, or the land housing and land use board. So I don't see the role, any role of the DDR in this, probably as members, but the, but the approval is lads with the other departments. So if I may suggest, because uh, the name Department of Disaster Resiliency may have some uh, expectation which cannot be attained by that department, we might as well uh, uh, call it by another name. And uh, by the consolidation of uh, some disaster management functions from other departments like DSWD and DOH, what it addresses mainly is emergency management because that is where we have the urgency of uh, carrying out uh, actions, uh, providing relief operations to affected people in the event of disaster. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. One very Good quick question, uh, uh, based on your uh, statement. Are you in favor of uh, the creation of the proposed department of, department, uh, of resiliency? Yes or no na lang muna? Yes, sir. You are in favor. Yes, sir. But well, uh, I have some reservations. Parang uh, ang context ng statement po, you are against eh. Oh, what what is your but? What is your however? Well, uh, we can have some mi minor modifications. It can be if those can be carried out, then uh, that will make the department stronger, sir. Well, first. What other functions, assuming that you're absorbed under the newly created Department of Disaster Management, you know, for brevity, it's a disaster department. 
what other functions uh, under the OST ang maapektuhan kung uh, completely absorb kayo ng bagong department? Well, ano yung hindi nyo na magagawa? Well, marami po kaming hindi magagawa because the, the provision of warning is only one of the things that we do. We do a lot of research to improve warning, hazards, and risk assessment, and really studying the potential of events that can cause various disasters, be it related to weather, climate, and geological events. Our position, and the Secretary would state it, that if you look at what is needed in the Philippines, are disaster risk managers and disaster managers. These are the core competencies that we need in the new department, and that is what we lack. Simply coordinating things would not solve the problem. We need people to really focus on things, but other departments will still continue to do its job. Disaster resilience means three goals. One, to reduce the risks before the hazards would occur and before the climate change effects would happen. Third, to, second, to have an effective and efficient response. Therefore, preparedness and response must go together. Right now, it's distinct. And third is to have an efficient recovery and building back better learning from the past lessons of the previous disasters. Yun po ang kailangan, Mr. Senator. We cannot do this by simply staying with the same structure. We need to train people that would be the leader in disaster risk management and disaster management, and that DOST agencies are not those. Thank you. May we hear from the Secretary? Uh, good morning po, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge your presence. Thank Here you for coming. Well, uh, I just would like to add uh, to what uh, Yusek Sulidum has uh, mentioned. Excuse uh, me, Secretary. Acknowledge ko lang muna yung presence ni, ni Senator Nancy Dinay. Thank you po. Sige. And Senator Riz Antoveros. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, in the uh, mandates of uh, PBOLCs, while uh, they are uh, mandated to predict Okay, and to forecast uh, those that are related to eruptions and earthquakes, they have also a mandate to exploit the positive aspects of volcanic and volcanic terrain in the furtherance of the socio-economic development efforts of the government. So, for example, in the past, it was really the PBOX or the Commission on Volcanology that was instrumental in uh, pushing for a uh, geothermal energy program in the country. So it's not only the disasters that they are concerned about. Likewise, in the case of Pag-asa, uh, there is an enumeration of their uh, uh, functions, and uh, one of them really is to uh, uh, do the observation, collect data, and uh, uh, provide uh, this information for the benefit of agriculture, commerce, and industry. So, for example, uh, their uh, high, uh, agro meteorological uh, research is really fed to DA. Their uh, uh, data that are gathered uh, are benefiting our uh, transportation uh, companies, the airlines, and the uh, and the shipping, and uh, of course, in general, uh, for the purpose of commerce also. Now. Uh, we definitely would like Pagasa and PBOX to remain with DOST because they are actually science uh, organizations and uh, they actually are part of the other uh, institutions within our system, uh, our research and development institutes. In fact, they uh, lead uh, some of the researches uh, uh, that, there are that, that are being done uh, as a team of uh, agencies and uh, uh, definitely they are uh, actually uh, recognized as uh, science agencies by, the, by their counterparts in, uh, in the whole world. Now, uh, uh, if uh, there is a question on the governance model in other countries, I just would like to mention that, for example, in the U.S., uh, the U.S. Geological Survey and the uh, NOAA, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Ar Administration, are part of the Department of Interior, while the uh, uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, which may be equivalent to the Disaster Resilience uh, Department, is part of their uh, Department of Homeland uh, Security. They have no Department of Science and Technology. Thank you, Your Honor. Before I yield the floor to uh, the other members of the committee, what's the official position now of the OST? 
on the creation of the depart the proposed the creation of the department. Your Honor, there is an administration bill that was mentioned by the President in the SONA. We support that bill, but that bill does not transfer DOS uh, PAGAS and PBOX to DRR. If it was not mentioned in the SONA, and you are now being asked if you are supporting Actually, the Your PAGAS. Honor, I believe that... Of course, I believe that you have to support whatever policy decision yeah. the President... But uh, uh, honestly, I believe that uh, we have to give a chance to the NDRRMC because, you know, we, it has been there for just uh, a couple of years and we can see that in recent occurrences of disasters, it, it's the President himself who said that he is satisfied with the way the coordination and the response was done. So if I were to be asked uh, if the, it was not mentioned in the SONA, I would uh, prefer that we maintain the NDRRMC. Thank you, sir. Uh, but would you agree that uh, there should be a shift now, 10 years after the passage of 10121, there should be a shift from being reactive to being proactive, you know, meaning ang emphasis na natin, prevention and mitigation na. So we can prevent loss of lives, yung uh, destruction of properties, Instead of just being reactive whenever there's a calamity, that's the only time that we scramble. I support that, Your Honor. Yeah. So, any, anyone from the members of the committee who would like to... Yes, Senator Tolentino is recognized. Hello, maga po. Siguro tanongin ko lang, mag-react lang ako dun sa mga nauna po nagsalita kanina, si Yusek Halad and then si Director Sulidum, Secre Secretary de la Peña, and then turn, turn this... Uh, uh, committee conversation into current affairs by directing a question likewise to uh, Mr. Lito Castro of Batangas, PDRRMO. Ito po nangyari sa taal. How will the present setup be more efficient with the present setup? Uh, I direct this to uh, Yusek Halad and likewise to Secretary De La Peña. Uh, okay yung sabi nyo, Secretary De La Peña, okay yung existing <coughs> setup. Kung hindi po dumating si Presidente sa Batanga City, makukunvin ba yung NDRIMC? Ilang meeting na ng NDRIMC? Siguro, hindi naman uma-attend yung mga cabinet na no offense to my former colleagues in the cabinet. Hindi po na obligang uma-attend yung uh, miyembro ng cabinet. Halimbawa po si Yusek Halad ang tumawag na meeting as Executive Director of NDRIMC. A-attend ba si Secretary de la Peña? A-attend ba ang uh, Secretary ng DILG? Secretary Anyo? A-attend ba ang Secretary ng DSWD? Uh, yung totoo, can a, can a uh, non-cabinet member or even a cabinet member oblige other cabinet members to attend an emergency and dreamsy meeting January 12, habang pumupotok pa si Taal? Uh, Yusek Halad, uh, mag magkausap pa tayo nung habang napotok si Taal. Siguro mga alas 7 ng nauna kong tinawagan si Secretary Sulidum, uh, si Yusek Sulidum. So, can you convene a meeting uh, immediately after, hours after the eruption in Camp Aguinaldo of all, of all the players who are members of the NDRIMC? Yung honest ano. And sa assessment mo, uh, without the presence of the Executive Secretary, Secretary Medjaldea, Makukunvin ba yun uh, to respond yung, sa, yung sa, sa lindol sa Mindanao o itong potok ng Taal? So, given that setup, up relate ko rin kay uh, Mr. De Castro, tinawagan, an oras kita tinawagan? Umaga, di ba? Mamaya, mamaya, te, pinapupuntahin mo sana yung, inihintay ko yung abogada ang papupuntahin mo, ato ni Diane, hindi na rin dumating, di ba? Nandito ba si Diane? Ayun, maganda ka pala. Good morning, ma'am. So, Yusig Halad. Sir, uh, after that uh, eruption, uh, well, we can convene, but uh, the attendance of the secretaries, the members, uh, that I cannot assure you. But what we did was uh, raise the alert level of the NDREAM-C operation center to uh, red and convene the so, response cluster. So, Yusek Halad, you are admitting that uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot ensure the presence of the key players. So, who are the key players? Secretary Rolly Bautista, so, uh, Secretary uh, Del Lorenzana, uh, Secretary Anyo, 
So, nakita niya yung gravity nito, tigil lang operations ng airport, so kailangan din natin si Secretary Tugade. So, kung hindi mo makukonvene yun, hindi ba nagpapatunay yan na kailangan talaga ng isang departamento na may tututok dito. Kung hindi, lilipas ang 24 oras, 48 oras, na naghihintay pa ng response, hindi lang yung mga tiga Batangas at Kabite, kung hindi ang buong taong bayan, lalong-lalo na yung mga na-delay yung flight na OFW, yung hindi na natutulog na sa airport. So, kung, hin kung yun ay magpapadala lang ng mga representatives, no offense to the representatives, ay ano kaya, ano kaya ang magiging punot dulo? Ano magiging uh, uh, response? response? Kasi itatanong pa nung ASIC at USEC muli doon sa kanilang cabinet uh, secretary the following day ay dineclare na holiday. Walang pasok on Monday, uh, January 13. So, how, how will you now ensure a, a, an effective response? Hindi pa nangyayari yung malakas na lindol sa Metro Manila. Di ba? Pag lumindol dito ng 7, pinag-uusapan natin nung dati, yung sexolidom, 7.2. So, 7.2. Convince, uh, convince si Endrim C. Sa Camp Aguinaldo. Ay, palagay ko, may tama na rin ang EDSA. So, paano kaya yon? So, you're now admitting, uh, kanina, I heard you, the need for a department, but uh, you want to maintain a council uh, akin to the existing and DreamC, but after 10 years, do we, do we see the effectiveness of and DreamC, uh, given the Yolanda experience, earthquakes in Mindanao, Ursula, yung Ursula, Pasko, walang pasok. Walang pasok sa Ursula. Tinamaan si Capis, Antique, Iloilo. So, we now, we now have here uh, Taal. So, tingnan nyo yung uh, let the public judge, yung, yung, yung collective response, which the President uh, gave an, an A-OK approval, and I, and, and I am uh, and I'm sure uh, he validated this, but Given the institutional response, okay ba yun, Yusag Alad? Or is there still some uh, rooms for adjustment? Sir, uh, not convening the council immediately after the eruption does not mean the weakness. What the strength that we saw are the reactions of the different agencies, even without the, con without the council and the LGUs. convened. And the LGUs. Yes, sir. Batangas, to highlight, for example, uh, Secretary Kabite, Bautista, was there in the yes, immediately know. in the afternoon of that uh, He was day. in Talisay. Yes, sir. And we commend uh, him for that. I went to Batangas that night because uh, uh, I waited for my vehicle to bring me to... <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> time and we coordinated with uh, various other agencies. The AP, PNP deployed the trucks on that night. So, uh, and uh, much of the actions were uh, carried out with our, through coordinations with our focal persons, not directly to the uh, with, with the permission secretary. of uh, Senator Tolentino and Jose Calad, what you're trying to say is convening the council is not necessarily the answer. It is uh, implementing an existing plan because there is in existence, uh, diba, under 10121, merong NDRRM plan. And meron ding LD, meaning local, DRRM plan in place. So dapat ito, na, without even convening, dapat si Secretary Bautista being the chairperson of the response, yung cluster, ano, nandun sila along with the member agencies. So pwedeng uh, maipatupad yung 10121 or pwedeng mag-respond uh, properly even without convening the council. That's what you're saying. And you have done that. Uh, Secretary <coughs> Anyo. So before I get to yeah. uh, response, uh, if I may, uh, with due respect. Alam niyo po, tama, tama lahat yung ano eh, the, the, the plans were there and observed. But uh, if, if the records, your folders will show, uh, with due respect, I even filed a, a separate bill, uh, which is part of this committee hearing, uh, Senate Bill 1272 and Mr. Rosilito Castro of Batangas uh, PDRRMO 
is the PD of Batangas here, wala. Colonel uh, Quilantes, wala. So, ganito po yung plan uh, with your respect. Pag, pag, lum, pag pumutok si Taal, kausap ko si, kausap ko si Jose Galad, kausap ko si Secretary Rolly Bautista, ang evacuation center nyo is either Nasugbu or Santo Tomas. So, sa Batangas, Batangas yung pinlano nyo eh. Batangas. Wala hong plano na pag pumutok si Taal, ang mga kababayan nating tiga Talisay, Lemery, Agoncillo, San Nicolas, ay pupunta sa Cavite. Kasi hindi naman, hindi naman ginawa yung batas o wala tayong naging drill na kaming mga tiga Alfonso, tiga Naik, tiga Dasmarinas, ang tatanggap ng mga tiga Batangas. Hindi tayo nag-rehearse doon eh. Yung naman mga kababayan natin sa Talisay, hindi naman nag-rehearse si Mayor na tanawan, pagpotok nito, ang takbo nyo papuntang Alfonso. Ang takbo either Santo Tomas or parts of Batangas. So, teka mo na sir, wala tayong, wala akong alam na naging rehearsal tayo doon. Si Governor Rimulya at ang mga kababayan namin, ang mga LGU sa Cavite, ang nirehearse nila, ang kanilang sasaluhing ibakwis ay yung mga kababayan nila when they declare a state of emergency. Hindi pa ho nangyari na bumaha sa Tumana, sa Marikina, na tinanggap ng Quezon City as part of an inter-LGU plan yung mga evacuees ng Marikina. Ganon din pag bumaha sa Kaloocan, hindi naman tatakbo yun ng Nabotas, Nabotas or Malabon Evacuation Center. Wala tayong ganun rehearsal. At hindi binadjeta ng Cavite yun. Hindi rin, kaya yun, nag, nag, ang tawag sa uh, Batangas, nagtipasan na lang pataas. Kasi yun ang ligtas. So, what I'm saying is this. The, the, there may be plans, pero there were no drills. Wala tayong ginawang, o pagputok nito, takbo kayo ng Tagaytay. Meron ba kong ganun? Hindi, kami, as far as Tagaytay is concerned, hindi ko alam na ta, yung itong evacuation center namin, naka-reserve for Laurel, Lemery, Agoncillo. Ganun ba yun? Uh, Dapat pasalita sa then Secretary Anyo. Your, your Honor, uh, we have the contingency plan for Taal Volcano eruption. Part of that is the evacuation plan. So sa evacuation plan po namin, hinati po sa namin sa apat, which is four quadrants. Yes, yes. yes sir. Is within Batangas. No, sir. Uh, ito pong aming contingency plan, Tagaytay is one part of our plan for evacuation. In fact, uh, we have a conversation with the uh, Civil Defense uh, Calabarzon wherein we are going to arrange. Hindi, sir, pero, natapos yung arrangement. Walang, walang, walang na, na plan siyang plano na kayo, Tagaytay, tatanggapin nyo si Laurel Lemery. As far as I'm concerned, alam ko yung nangyayari sa Tagaytay. Eh. Ganon din siguro sa Alfonso. I can speak for Alfonso Cavite. Uh, yes, sir. Alfonso is not included, actually. So, the volume of And Mendez. The... Ang dami namin evacuate sa Mendez. And Dasmarinas. Yes, sir. And Naik. Di ba? So, kaya, kaya sinasabi ko po ito, Mr. Chair. So, given the existing protocols, may mga pangyayari na hindi natin na plano. Uh, nasa palagay ko, dapat natin ayusin. Yung lindol sa magsaysay, Siguro pwedeng lumipat sa Compostela Valley, Davao de Oro ngayon, na hindi na rehearse. You may have your plans, but the receiving host LGUs are not aware of the consequences. Magkano iba budget namin dito? Saan ang, uh, yun, yun ba ang gagamitin? Kasi ang, ang nire-rehearse natin, yung ating local uh, uh, Dream C, pati yung lo local social welfare officers, ay yung mga kababayan lang nila. Di ba? Pag, pag, pag halimbawa naman lumindol sa Tagaytay, wala rin naman kayong plano na magtatakbuhan kami papunta ng Agoncillo, Bawan, Alitagtag, Ibaan, mataas na kami, di ba? So, lahat po ito, kung meron kayong four quadrants, it was not rehearsed, uh, it was not budgeted, it was uh, probably it's part of your long-term plan. Kaya po siguro, Mr. Chair, ang, ang sinasabi ko po rito, for purposes of NDREMC, uh, although we have protocols, the immediate, immediate uh, reaction would call for an adjustment to realities on the ground. Diba? Mr. Um, Chair. Mr. Chair.
Senator Ontiveros. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With the permission of uh, Sen. Francis, gusto ko lang because I, I need to step out a bit in a bit. Pero uh, may may relationship dun sa uh, line of questioning ni Sen. Francis. Yung follow up question ko. I believe, Mr. Chair, na yung pagconsider natin ng isang bagong disaster resilience law dapat uh, nakapatong po sa mga sa assessment natin sa binabanggit na rin na RA 10121. And in fact, dito rin po sa kit natin, kasabay nung bill ni San Francis, meron po tayong kopya nung inintroduce ni San Sherwin na PS Resolution Number 288. Uh, konektado po sa tanong ko, meron na po bang assessment o sunset review ng RA 10121? At kung meron, uh, kung ano po yung pertinent findings niya. Undergirding itong mga Tinatanong ni San Francis kay uh, Mr. Castro yung actual implementation ng plano on the ground, Mr. Chair. Anybody can respond? S Secretary Anyo, you were about to say something earlier. Uh, sir, first on the question of uh, convening the NDR or MC, <clears throat> actually, uh, if the chairman, which is the Secretary of National Defense, calls for the convening of the uh, NDR MC, all the cabinet will, will attend because we have been doing this even during uh, times that there are no disasters. In fact, we have uh, periodic regular meetings and simulation exercise. But uh, as uh, Yusek Halat said, that uh, uh, not convening does not mean that the NDRMC cannot uh, uh, respond. But we have to admit that uh, uh, the NDRMC right now is not really fully responsive to the uh, uh, recent disasters that befell our country. Considering that we are in the Ring of Fire and the Typhoon Belt, and we have so much volcanoes in, in our country, so there's really a need to strengthen the NDRMC. Uh, right now, unlike in other countries, it appears that the Philippines has the biggest coordinating body when, de when dealing with disasters. U.S. has FEMA, Russia has Ministry of Emergency Situations, Canada has its Public safety in Australia has its emergency management. Maybe not necessarily making it one full department, but elevating the NDRMC. Just like what Joseph Halad said, in Mongolia, it is led by the Prime Minister, where it has a lot of uh, authority to summon everyone, even using the, the, the entire uh, machinery of the country. Now, one, one thing uh, that was mentioned by Senator Francis Tolentino, Yes, uh, recent disasters have shown that an inter-LGU can be flattened and rendered incapable of responding to its needs. And the other government, the other LGU should be allowed to assist affected LGUs in furtherance of the interlocal government relations that is enshrined in the uh, local government code. But right now in the NDRMC, Wala pong ganun because yung ating uh, structure, PDERMC, and then municipal uh, DRRMC, and so on. So wala pong inter-provincial and inter-municipal. So those are the things that uh, we would like to amend in our uh, uh, NDRMC law. Santa Risa. Um, yes, Mr. Chief. Whichever way the discussion this morning goes, ano, two basic questions yung don't I babalik, ano? Is the creation of the department necessary? Second question, is it feasible? I'd like to, for example, yung Taal, ano? Uh, when was the first time that PBOX uh, dished out uh, yung alert notice ninyo? March 2019. And when was the first time that the ILG, being the chairperson of preparedness, ano? yung sa thematic area na prepared this. Kailan kayo nakapag-prepare in response to the alert notice issued by uh, PBOX? Actually, sir, we have uh, what we call the operation list. Oh. This is the protocols uh, that, are, uh, that is being followed by the local government units in responding to a disaster that is about to happen or happening or just uh, uh, after the incident happened. So, mean to say, uh, when, when this uh, advisory was given, the alert level one, we already communicated with all our uh, local government units necessary preparations because I am the uh, chairman for the uh, disaster preparedness. And uh, 
Uh, the development on January 12 was so rapid that from alert level one to alert level four. But nevertheless, uh, we can say that the uh, local government units still have were, uh, were able to do their their uh, function properly. Mr. Chair, with, Dr. The, Dr. with the permission of the uh, chair, Sir Secretary, I know itulil lang natin yung yung flow, di ba? Um, si Fivox set may alert na siya ng March, and then you uh, sent out parang an advisory then sa mga LGU, and then after that, nag submit ba yung mga LGU? ng plano nila just in case na sumabog nga itong Taal Volcano? Uh, in place na po, ma'am, yung kanilang uh, uh, set of things to do. Uh, but was, was there a submission of their plan to the DILG? Uh, because, no. I mean, paano nyo malalaman kung in place na yung plano? Kung, I guess, kung, I guess yun yung uh, parang best evidence that they are really prepared kasi meron silang um, submitted plan sa DILG. Uh, we have uh, MLGOOs in place in every municipalities that uh, actually uh, work closely with the uh, local chief executives. And uh, these uh, MLGOOs uh, submit uh, regular reports to us, particularly on, on areas where there are pending disasters. During the January 12, because it is so sudden, uh, we don't have the time, we, had the, we don't have the time to make reports, but we, uh, in my part, I already uh, contacting uh, lo local chief executives regarding the uh, impending eruption of uh, Taal Volcano. But from March 2019 to January 2020, ilan ho yung mga LGUs na nag-submit sa inyo ng um, disaster plan kung puputong nga yung Taal Volcano? Yes, uh, from time to time we receive uh, reports from the uh, uh, corresponding LGUs, uh, Mr. Chair. And then was there an actual meeting kung saan pinatawag nyo yung mga um, taga Cavite, taga Batangas, na parang, oh sige, ganito yung uh, worst case scenario natin and uh, ito yung magiging uh, plano natin pag nangyari nga ito. Meron ho bang ganong actual meeting? Kasi parang katulad nga ng sinasabi ni Senator Talentino, parang nagulat sila na yung mga taga Batangas biglang pumunta sa Cavite. Yes, Mr. Chair, the PDRRMC of Batangas uh, conducted their meetings. So, uh, but in coordination with the PDRRMC of Cavite, was yeah, that, there... That's uh, what I pointed out, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, there is that, uh, that, that lacking mechanism. We are just actually looking per LGU downwards not the lateral, and I think that's one of the uh, uh, I mean, the lapses in 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 the in the RMC mechanism. And Siguro Secretary, would an agency solve yung mga ganitong lapses? Well, actually, uh, it, it depends on the department would solve yung mga ganitong lapses, or was it just a matter of following a certain protocol na hindi hindi nasunod? Because I don't think you need the department to call a meeting between uh, provinces or di ba meron pa nga, may mga regional development council pa. So, hindi kaya nandun din yung pagkukulang? Yes, meron din pong safety net, li safety net like uh, the OCD has regional offices. It could have initiated uh, coordination like this, but probably it was not listed on the... Uh, SOP or protocol. That's why uh, we, every everything were actually everything is uh, relegated or delegated to the PD, its own PDRRMC. The chair recognizes the presence or acknowledges the presence of uh, Senator Christopher Bongo. Good morning, sir. Senator Risa. On follow-up, Mr. Chair, na-appreciate ko po yung inputs ni Sec. Anyo kanina tungkol dun sa isang gap ng inter-LGU uh, preparation at saka response. Um, and I, I suppose magiging bahagi yun ng comprehensive assessment ng implementation ng 10121. But tama po ba ako na impression ko na wala pang comprehensive assessment ng implementation ng batas na iyon? Yes, I agree, uh, Mr. Chair. And so, magiging mahalaga po yung pagdinig ng Senate nung resolution ni Sen. Sherwin precisely uh, for that purpose. And tingin ko lang po, Chair, na those findings would 
be important basis sa pag-consider natin ito namang bill on a department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, let's include at our discussion the uh, members of the NGOs, uh, starting with Jusek Pama, Ms. Lois Haga, and then Dr. Laliana, uh, in that order. Jusek Pama, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, sir, I'm not a USEC anymore. <laughs> I'm now with the private sector. Sir, um, gusto ko lang pong uh, i-address yung tinatanong ni uh, Senator Hontiveros relative to uh, assessing the effectiveness of RA-1121. Um, we, we all know that under Section 27 of RA-1121, uh, the law calls for a sunset review after five years in 2010, 101 was, uh, um, was approved and implemented, and supposedly 2015, Congress should have conducted the sunset review. The Oversight Committee of Congress, both houses, should have undertaken a sunset review. I will use the word should. And, and we made that recommendation to Congress at the time. We were working on Yolanda, Handiva. Right? Yes, sir. We yes, made sir. that recommendation that the sunset review be uh, implemented. <coughs> Yes, sir. Or it, executed. Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, uh, it, it was a multi-stakeholder uh, 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 endeavor. In fact, uh, Ms. Uh, G. Sevilla here, who with uh, the NGO of the RRNet, had been an active participant in that. And in fact, as early as 2014, pagkatapos po ng Yolanda, there, meron na pong recommendation. And we started with a technical working group to already conduct not only a review of, of what happened in Yolanda, but effectively leading towards reviewing ang effectiveness nitong uh, 10121 with, with, with the end in view that in 2015, we will be called by Congress precisely to do the sunset uh, review. Uh, from 2014 to 2015 po, that consultations had been undertaken multi-sectoral uh, and practically nationwide. Uh, uh, as a result of that, para pa ko na lang po, by 2015, um, natapos po yung ating um, um, uh, pag-review ang aming uh, paggawa ng study nito, ng technical working group. In fact, this was funded by UNDP, if I'm not mistaken, para, para that, that's we created the PMO sa OCD. Ang naging produkto po nito, uh, if, if I may, was a proposal precisely to have amendments to 10121. And the product that we had was actually approved by the then um, um, uh, NDR RMC. Unfortunately, inabutan po ito ng election at hindi po nakapagtawag ng uh, se ang oversight ang, ang Congress. So, if I'm not mistaken, that's the 16th Congress. So, the Sunset Review in 2015 never materialized. Yet, uh, if I may, uh, as just, I mean, to set the record straight, in the 17th Congress, Congressman uh, Salceda actually uh, uh, made that uh, product as a reference in filing his first bill in Congress, proposing for a, uh, not a department, but a National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Authority. In fact, I have a copy of that, and we, we can provide uh, this um, um, honorable um, uh, panel. Opa, um, I, I think um, that was in okay, the 16th Congress, Your Honor, if I'm not, a uh, 17th Congress. the discussion again to the basic question. Is the creation of a department necessary? Next question, is it feasible? From the point of view of the uh, NGOs present? On the basis of why two points po. Why or why not? You know on that. two points po. Ang, ang recommendation po ng uh, result ng uh, review na yun was a, an authority to address basic, the, the, the basic idea of giving more powers to OCD or whatever what will come out of that. So, but calling for a department po will be subjective ngayon on the basis of the different requirements that, uh, of, of the situation right now. If you notice, most of the proposals now are Department of Disaster Resilience, hindi na po risk reduction, because we want to level up the context of addressing disasters. Ngunit sa lahat po ng mga proposals ngayon, for the point of view of the NGOs in our studies, it seems like the, the resilience word itself has not been properly addressed. Most of the addresses are, are being addressed now on risk reduction because resilience has a, de a different meaning and it takes a bigger context on how we are going to address disasters. 
ang pagdating po sa resilience, uh, masasagot, ma, ipapasa ko po yan sa aming kasamaan kay um, um, Ms. Loisaga. Pero to answer the question directly, I don't think we need a department that will now cannibalize other departments. Mr. Chair, just one question. Yes, uh, Sam um, Tobinay. Since nabanggit na nga yung resilience, at the moment, sino ang government agency who is uh, the one in charge dun sa aspeto ng resiliency? Y Your Honor, in the context of resilience, dahil alam nga po natin, mas malawak po ang, ang, sang, ang sakop nito. Pag sinabi po natin ngayon na resilience, disaster resilience sa gobyerno, maraming, maraming ahensya po ng gobyerno ang nakatutok dito. Kasama na po, for example, the Climate Change Commission. Pero, pero wala ho nagtitimon na isa? Walang isang uh, opisina po na nagtitimon. Dahil ayon sa batas, ang OCD and DRRMC rin po, ang nakatutok rin po sa kanilang mandato is risk reduction. Uh, Mr. Chair? Senator Aimee. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to uh, reiterate um, my support for APOPAMA uh, in as much as indeed my uh, bill, uh, Senate Bill 1125, uh, only recommends an authority. Firstly, nauubos kasi sa sweldo ng USEC kapag uh, department kagad. Uh, Ilocano kami, dahan-dahan talaga bago mag-develop ng uh, department. Yung tatay ko talagang takot na takot mag-department pag full-blown. Ikalawa dyan, hindi lang yung uh, pera at yung budget, but more importantly, it takes time to develop the skill sets involved. Uh, you can't get the uh, people because you have to train them up, and uh, as my Tony and the rest knows, this is a very technical, scientific-based uh, subject. Ikalawa, yung... Uh, issue ng uh, coordination sana under the office of the president. Alam natin na mas importante yon kasi masalimuot yung usapin ng disaster management at nandyan yung DADS, WD, DOH, D, uh, uh, DILG, yung first responders, parating lokal, nakita naman natin sa taal. At uh, ang dapat gamitin, ang uh, ginagamit na termino sa buong mundo ngayon, e resilience na. You really can't manage a disaster, so it's a clear misnomer. And resiliency is a year-round, multidisciplinary approach. Yun lang po. Thank you. Senator Risa. Uh, then after Senator Risa, we'll hear from uh, Ms. Loisaga and then Dr. Laliana. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, could the Chair, uh, uh, on behalf of the committee, please request from Vice Admiral Pama a copy of the pre-sunset review proposed amendments to 10121 na nabuo po nung uh, dating technical working group. Salamat, Mr. Chair. And after uh, Ms. Loisaga and Dr. Liliana, we'll, we'll want, we want to hear from DBM yung cost uh, relative to the statement of uh, Senator Aimee. Mamia, we want to hear from you to put up a department especially a mega department no, as proposed, no? because I call it a mega department kasi ano eh, may mga proposal to even absorb other agencies belonging to di the different departments. So later, Ms. Loisaga, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, on behalf of the National Resilience Council, we would like to echo uh, the support for Senator Gachalian's resolution on the review and the inquiry and to finalize, in fact, the sunset review of 10121. Uh, we would also like to, to echo the words of uh, Yusek Pama in referring to resilience as distinct from disaster risk reduction. At this point, there is no one department we see that is, in fact, in charge of resilience. However, it's critically important to define disasters as not humanitarian events, but events that are caused by development decisions. This means that the risk that is the cause of disasters is the combination of three elements, the hazards, the exposure, and the elements uh, of vulnerability and the characteristics of vulnerability, where we do not see a great emphasis in, in any of the bills that are being proposed and in previous, uh, the 10121 as well, is this new emphasis of resilience on really mitigating and decreasing exposure and vulnerability. Who builds what, when, where, and how are the sources of risk in our country? The hazards are always present, but the decisions that pertain to risk governance locally, 
nationally and regionally are what causes disasters to happen. Ibig po sabihin, man-made po ang disasters natin. We decide where to build, how to build, whom to settle where, and therefore we create that risk uh, and not the hazards that are causing the disasters to happen. So resilience in this case means that we will be making decisions that will increase the capacity of our communities and society to absorb the risk, but also to recover in a way that will make us less vulnerable to the future hazards that may happen. And right now, po, th this development aspect of resilience is not given due emphasis. We wish to cite for the role of NEDA in this respect. In terms of investments and planning for resilience, uh, the National Economic Development Authority actually has a very key role to play. Ambition natin, the national security strategy, all cite disaster resilience. We just don't see it echoed po in the bills at the moment. Uh, secondly, we feel that the role of other sectors of society is also underemphasized. The private sector po has a very large role to play in generating disaster risk as well as reducing it and preventing it to happen. We're hoping for more participation and inclusivity on behalf of the private sector in terms of trying to stop risk from being created, reduce the risk that they have already contributed to, and prevent the future of, of risk in the country. Finally, po, the role of uh, the council is really to emphasize the preventive nature of our work. We want to emphasize the proactive and preventive nature of resilience planning and investment. And in this regard, risk governance from the local to the national level, that it be multi-stakeholder and beyond multidisciplinary, and we would like to echo what Senator Marcos has said, we would like to include the word transdisciplinary in our approaches. We look at systems, we look at networks, we look at the coordination between agencies, and we look at the way these agencies relate to other sectors of society. Only once we, we, once we can do that, can we really say that we are able to provide the institutional arrangements within government to actually generate the resilience as a national goal. Thank you, Paul. Uh, from, the, from the response of uh, Ms. Ms. Yu Lo, Loisaga, uh, relative to the term man-made, would that probably include a terror attack, a chemical uh, attack, a massive bomb explosion, which probably uh, would not fit in your uh, ordinary definition of uh, resilience, because these, these things, though man-made, uh, would be different from a, a natural calamity, and most of our military officers here are familiar with that. So yes. I think the resilience there would be, uh, would in no way be, uh, with jibe with, with, yeah. with, with these acts of terror. This is very timely because we are discussing in the plenary revisions to the Human Security Act. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, with your indulgence, may I respond to Senator Tolentino? Yes, in fact, in our definition of, Sen of resilience, Senator Tolentino, we look at different uh, pillars, what we call, in terms of contributing to resilience. One is leadership and governance, the critical decision-making uh, capacity that is based on evidence. Secondly, we look at human development systems, social, education, health. Thirdly, we look at economy, infrastructure buildings and households, environment, and lastly, sir, human security, not just in its current definition, which relates to food, energy, and water security, but inclusive of freedom from fear, want, and indignities, as well as po public safety, territorial defense, the defense against biological and other man-made or man-made man or human-induced hazards. We include all of these four in our metric system for resilience, specifically in LGUs such as Zamboanga City, where in, together with Joint Task Force Zamboanga, we have devised a scorecard that addresses both their external, internal, public safety and security, as well as their HADR capabilities. So human security is part, both man-made, both uh, natural, man-made, and of course, what we're calling now natural technological disasters, which are characterized by what happened in Fukushima, where interdependent technological systems are impacted by natural hazards that then cause a series of cascading disasters. So not just natural hazards, man-made or human-induced, 
but also natural technological hazards are now part of the resilience agenda. Ms. Lusaga, what do you see as uh, the weaknesses of the present setup under 10121, if any? Uh? Sir, if I may, uh, we really wish to echo the, uh, the, the words of uh, the OST Secretary, as well as Yusek Pama and Yusek Halad and Secretary Anyo. We feel that the leadership rank of the OCD, CDA, and Executive Director must be elevated and must be given greater authority and responsibility as well. And what is your position in the proposed creation of a department? So at this point, Paul, we feel that the elevation of the authority of the will CDA suffice. will suffice. Thank you. Doctor, uh, before I recognize uh, Dr. Laliana, or? Mr. Chair, uh, just a follow-up po sa tanong niyo. And would that elevation address the uh, gap in the resiliency aspect? Or do you feel na dapat hiwalay itong aspeto ng resiliency? Um, Madam Senator, I think what at this point we should do is come together interdepartmentally and I should, I should bring up that we are part of an effort that is led by OCD, CCC, DILG, DNR, National Security Council as well, uh, that are working on convergence in terms of resilience outcomes, but specific outputs and goals of the different departments through their mission vision are respected. So the, the, the convergence must occur in terms of the shared outcome, which is national resilience, but the specific outputs of each of the different departments must somehow be harmonized. And therefore, this internal convergence uh, activity is something that we are supporting at the National Resilience Council together with the different uh, agencies in great partnership with OCDPA. Yes, yung four thematic areas are by no means autonomous, hindi ba? Walang start, walang end point ito eh. Sir, in fact, the, the concept of disaster risk is it's both complex and dynamic. It continues to change. Yes. So the four thematic areas are interdependent and therefore must be focused on a specific particular goal. Thank you. Dr. Laliana, uh, yes, before Dr. Laliana, Yusek Pama. So just follow through to answer precisely yung tinatanong niya kung, kung ang kakayanan nitong inner. If I can just read and quote uh, a portion of the rationale for PUSHA as a result of that uh, technical working group. And I quote, one, uh, Whatever it is, whether it's a department, an authority, but the, the, the rationale is that it should be one, this is a quotation, sir, one that is clearly mandated to lead in the coordination, monitoring, oversight, and implementation of disaster risk reduction and management equipped with the necessary competency and resources to engage new actors, particularly in the field of risk transfer and insurance, sinama na po yun, and built with the necessary structure to manage broader governance arrangements and oversee the implementation of disaster risk reduction and management towards sustainable development. So ito, DRR pa lang pinag-usapan eh, but in the, in, in the new, new paradigm now, this can be translated into a resilience with a new definition. Dr. Laliana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. To directly respond to the question raised by the chair, in my view, creating a disaster department is not necessary. Our DRRM challenges are operational, not structural or institutional. The Philippines is among the top 10 highest disaster risk countries, according to the World Risk Report of 2019. To be specific, to be specific we rated very high risk for exposure, high risk for vulnerability, high risk for susceptibility, and high risk for the lack of coping capacity. The bright spot in our report is that we rated medium in terms of lack of adaptive capacities. This means structural changes as well as measures and strategies that deal with the negative impact of disasters. As the chair already noted, Considering a disaster department will raise the problem of carving out DRRM functions from various agencies and offices. Either we create a super department or we're back to the problem of coordination. 
creating a new department will not necessarily solve the weakness identified in the current arrangement. That is, ensuring prompt collaboration and cooperative action among the NDRC agencies. A department is not necessarily better at ensuring unified action than an interagency council. This will be more acute when a department is organized around the principle of unity of command. A department for DRRM will still have to work with DNR, DND, DOH, DICT, and other agencies. Any disaster governance redesign must take off from the following considerations. First, disaster resilience is multi-jurisdictional in nature. This means that not one agency can do it alone. Success is dependent on the ability to secure cooperation among autonomous actors and agencies. Agencies are autonomous because they belong to different organizations and report to different superiors, but they need each other as they bring critical and strategic assets that contribute to addressing disaster resilience. Second, local governments play a key role. A governance arrangement should enable LGUs to play an important role in policy as well as implementation. The governance body should not be dominated by national government agencies. Right now, there are only four LGU representatives in the 30 plus NDR MMC. Finally, disaster resilience is not solely a domain of government. It is therefore necessary to institutionalize the vital role of communities, civil societies, businesses, and other stakeholders operating at all scale from local to global in disaster resilience. Token representation of stakeholders should give way to their full participation in decision making and implementation. In sum, taking into consideration recent studies on disaster resilience and research on governance models, the way forward is reforming and strengthening the NDRMMC, but not creating a disaster department. Thank you. With the indulgence of Senator Go, we'd like to hear also from Dr. Lagmay and uh, Ms. Uh, Sevilla. Uh, Ms. Sevilla and then uh, Dr. Lagmay, please. Good morning to everyone, Mr. Chair. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity that you have provided the sector. Uh, as mentioned, I represent the, the non-government sector, and uh, I'd like to uh, say that I agree with most of the points raised by the different departments, even to which was started by Yusek Halad. We, I agree that uh, to the questions that you raised, Mr. Chair, the basic information is missing. Uh, what are the challenges uh, of RA 10121? Um, I agree on behalf of my D DRRNet Philippines. Um, the council, the uh, NDRIMC should not be abolished. It should be enhanced given the capacity and maybe the further capabilities. But uh, the, our network would like to uh, all of us to focus on the existing law. The law should not be repealed, it should be amended as provided in the Sunset Review. The results of the Sunset Review would call for many enhancements or, or changes because we have learned from the many disasters that have visited our country. Yun lang po ang masasabi namin. Uh, and I also agree wholeheartedly with uh, with uh, with with Ms. Loisagas uh, pointing out that there should be more spaces, more platform for participation of the non-government sector, the communities, as mentioned by Dr. Uh, Emmanuel. Yes, participation, because as we always know, the frontliners are always the people on the ground. They suffer, uh, but without the information, uh, they will suffer more. In the past 10 years, definitely we have a lot of gains to show, 
There are many best practices, good practices from local government units, from the uh, local DRRM councils or local DRRM offices that have been set up for the past 10 years. Um, ang pinapaniniwala namin, napakaganda po na RA 10121, that it should not be repealed as, uh, as uh, the creation of a department will, uh, will recommend. Madami po doon ang nangyayari na at ginagawa na. Yun ho ang ating idapat i-focus on. We have to focus on the operationalization of the law. We should look into the implementation of all local government units um, of the law of RA 10121. And I think this is what we have been mentioned and harping on since day one when we have uh, uh, participated in the review of the law. Wag ho nating isa, isang tabi ang isang napakagandang batas at ang gawin ng natin ay tingnan point by point saan ba tayo nagkulang? Saan po ba tayo kailangang dagdagan? Multi-disciplinary, uh, multi-stakeholdership, more participation spaces, more um, communities to be involved in decision making, lahat po yan. Yun nung binanggit ni Yuse Kalad na dapat yung coordination ng enhance yun pong capacity to handle this disaster risk reduction and, and of course the overarching disaster resilience, yan po ang dapat pong uh, pating ka din. At ang ayaw po namin ay tayo ho ay bumalik dun sa pag-focus uh, lang sa, dis sa emergency management because that will just be not being proactive as we have uh, uh, envisioned in the first place. Ang gusto po natin ay proactive at yan na po iginagamit na natin. Uh, in place na po ang protocols, systems, and I think we have, to, we have to commend the OCD and all the members of the council in this aspect. There are many programs, but I think the holding hands or yun hong pag-alalay sa lahat ng pag-implementa ng batas, provisions of the law, yun ho ang dapat tutukan. Uh, kunwari po ang question ng evacuation management, meron na po yan sa batas. May binabanggit na nga po si Sir Castro. In place na po yung mga yan. Ako nga po, with due respect, I would like to find out, uh, kamusta po yung mga protocols, plans, systems, in for example, the areas na, na, na tinamaan po ng taal, ng eruption of taal. Tingnan natin how the protocols, plan systems are being operationalized. Uh, ganyan naman ho tayo. We learn from the experience. So kung yun ho ay, uh, ano ba ibig ko sabihin? Kung tayo ho natuto sa Yolanda, I think uh, we're getting there. Um, kasama po kami dun sa hindi natin kailangan ang departamento to be created. Thank you. Would you like to respond, uh, Senator Tolentino, very quickly? Yeah. Uh, the good uh, lady uh, resource, resource pers person would want to refer to my, the bill that's part of this committee hearing, Senate Bill 1272, which is precisely meant to address certain gaps. And this is not meant to repeal, but to even upgrade uh, Republic Act 10121, for instance, I propose an amendment that would call for an inter-LGU contingency plan. Gaya na nangyari, Kabite, Batangas, hindi kami handa na, hindi handa yung Alfonso na tumanggap ng Tiga Laurel, uh, Lemery, etc. Kasama po dito yon. Pangalawa, nakalagay din po dito yung uh, pagbibigay ng karapatan, ng kapangyarihan para sa mga LGUs to occupy, utilize private or commercial buildings not limited to schools and shopping malls warehouses as temporary evacuation centers uh, subject to the payment of appropriate rentals as just compensation after the calamity. So, uh, I correct ko lang ito. And for the record, we're not after the repeal. We are upgrading. It's part of your kit. And, and the upgrade uh, would mean the strengthening of the existing uh, Republic Act 10121 even without the sunset review, which should have been done five years ago. 
di ba si uh, Admiral Pama. So, wala po kaming sinasabi na i-repeal. Uh, even if we create a new department or upgrade the OCD, the same law will apply. The same framework will, will apply, but enhance. Marami pa hong, marami pa hong proposals. Eh. Uh, we, have, we have just created a, newly, uh, a new department of uh, housing, uh, urban settlements, uh, or, uh, and development. So a lot of this will be absorbed by the enhanced 101-21. Uh, just for the record, ma'am. Dr. Lagmay, please. In, in general po, uh, Senators, agree naman po ako sa mga sinasabi nung uh, mga NGOs and the private sector. Uh, meron lang po akong gustong i-point ano, i out that it's really the fine points that's, uh, that, that matters. No? Uh, importante po yung sinabi ni USEC, former USEC PAMA on the Sunset Review. Um, RA 101-21, uh, anon po yan, nine years, tama ba? Nine years, uh, the CCC, uh, yung Climate Change Act, uh, uh, ten years, no? 2009 and 2010. Um, uh, may, may, ano, may, may tagal na po ng panahon din yan. No? And uh, although maganda na sinasabi natin itong mga observations natin to, um, meron pa rin tayong mga disasters na nangyayari. And I think it's important to hear what uh, the, the people, the Sunset Review said. No? And that document is very, very important. In addition to that, we need to hear from the people sa LGUs who've suffered disasters. Uh, dito, nandito tayo sa Senate, no? but uh, when I go to those people or mga LGUs, they have complaints. No? And these complaints are real. Uh, take for example sa Naga City Cebu, sa Natonin, doon sa Usman, doon sa Biliran, no, doon sa Vinta. Uh, there are there there are uh, places na makikita natin if you hear the people, there's really a problem. No? So kung ano yung solution doon needs to be addressed. But ano nga ba yung solution na yon? Is it creating a new department? or just creating an authority, or not creating one at all, just elevate it into uh, 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 an, office, an official na higher authority. But I think what one thing that stands out is that amongst all of the people that we've interviewed that suffered disasters, e eh merong kakulungan doon sa pagpaplano, relay ng information, the information was insufficient, and so on and so forth. No? So, doon naman sa Congress, ang sinasabi naman sa Congress, which is really a compilation of, I think, the more than 30, 30 bills uh, related to disaster risk reduction as well as climate change adaptation and overall resilience. Uh, hindi naman po basta na naproduce yun yung suggestion to create a Department of Disaster Resilience. No? It's really to address the problems raised by the congressmen's constituents no, from different districts. And uh, it's very important that there's one department na accountable, responsible, na nagko-coordinate together in one single unit yung lahat ng efforts that are being done uh, currently. Hindi naman po sinasabi do sa Department of Disaster Resilience na tatanggalin yung mga efforts ng agencies. In fact, the NDRRMC changed its name to uh, uh, ano lang, yung, yung National Disaster Resilience Council. Um, that means doon sa department, nandun din po lahat yun. No? Gagawin lang na mas uh, uh, organized, mas, uh, uh, mas maganda yung communication, quick yung communication dahil they are all in a single department. And then there's responsibility na accountability na kung ano yung mangyari, there's one point person, one department na pwedeng puntahan ng mga tao for all of these that as other people said, kailangan synthesized and uh, isa lang ang, ang, ang pinagmumulan ng, ng responsibility at saka ng trabaho. 
Yun lang po yung amin from the University of the Philippines Resilience Institute. And we're also adding uh, yung emphasis on open data. No? Open data is very, very important. Kasi in science, you need trust. You need trust to be able to communicate. Uh, doon po sa mga provisions ng department, nakalagay po doon yung uh, key points, which is open data, and secondly, yung probabilistic risk assessment. Currently, we are only doing historical assessments in planning communities. Our hazards are only up to the historical record. We need to anticipate, especially for climate change impacts. And uh, in the versions that I've seen doon po sa Department of Disaster Resilience in Congress, those two very, very important factors or key points, probabilistic risk assessment to anticipate future hazards, including climate change impacts, which will occur in the future. It, it's not yet occurring now. That's very critical. We're not doing that now. And open data as well. Kasi po, if you talk about transdisciplinary work, scientists and engineers work together. If we're going to go interdisciplinary, then kailangan po natin mag-work sa mga musicians, sa mga artists, sa mga people from the humanities so that people can embrace the science. And then it does not stop there. We need to mainstream and bring down all of this information down to barangay level, down to the people. Then and only then does it become interdisciplinary. And for all of these to work, we need to have open data. We don't have open data. I cannot access open data. I cannot access a scientist. We have 112 SUCs. What will happen to all of these faculty members if they want to do research and the data is not available? Dun po sa Department of Disaster Resilience, those key points are addressed. And if we are talk to talk about science in disaster risk reduction, we need to have open data because we want to build trust. Science must be trusted. And in order to communicate, we need to have trust. So yun po yung mga nakikita ko na merong mga important points na magandang sinabi. But in our opinion, uh, we think that the Department of Disaster Resilience, uh, based on the versions that have been approved so far, are, are, are the, is the way to go for the country. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lagmay. The chair recognizes the, or acknowledges the presence of our Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Ralph Recto. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Senator Bong. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, distinguished uh, colleagues. Good morning to all of you. Mr. Chair, I agree with the gen uh, with a gentleman from Cavite that uh, we are not uh, looking for a repeal. We are going for an en enhancement, taking into account the results of the sunset uh, review. Uh, bawat oras po ay hindi natin, uh, 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 bawat oras na hindi natin inaayos ang ating mga batas at, at ating uh, bureaucracia, inilalapit sa atin na uh, lumalapit, sandali ah, Tagalog to, inilalapit natin sa kapahamakan ng ating mga kababayan. I appeal to my colleagues, let us not be afraid of change. There is nothing wrong with changing how our bureaucracy works. If the goal is to make the delivery of the government services more efficient, more effective, and more responsive to the needs of the Filipino people, all of, all of us must be aware of the ongoing havoc caused by the recent uh, eruption of the Taal volcano in Batangas. Billions of pesos worth of losses have been incurred in the lives and health and well-being of at least 270 Filipinos have been put in peril. And what makes the situation worse for the national government is the eruption came at, on the heels of a series of strong earthquakes in the southern parts of Mindanao and of two typhoons that hit parts of Visayas and Luzon. Natural disasters like this are beyond the control of man, of course, but we are not entirely helpless. There is so much that we can do to mitigate these effects on our lives and properties. Human beings have the capability and the governments have the responsibility 
to manage disasters in terms of risk reduction, preparedness, and response and recovery. Unfortunately, our existing laws do not provide us the best mechanism to do this. First, there is no unity in command and direction. The National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council or the NDDRMC created through Republic Act number 10121 is a working group of various government and non-government agencies with the participation of civil and private sector organizations. While it is tasked to oversee concerted efforts, no particular agency is in, in charge of our disaster resilience programs on a full-time and focused basis. Second, currently the NDRRMC is chaired by the Secretary of Department of National Defense and uh, its executive director is the administrator of the Office of Civil Defense, uh, Yusek Halad. Masyado na pong maraming ginagawa ang ating uh, DND secretary at ang iba pang miyembro ng gabinete na kasama po sa NDRRMC. Sa oras ng sakuna, madalas ay iba-iba ang pananaw ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno na kapaloob sa NDRRMC. Dahil iba-iba rin po ang kanilang mandato, walang iisang focus, walang iisang layunin. Sa halip na mabigyan ng pag-aasa ang mga taong nasa lanta, lalo pang dumadagdag ang pahirap sa kanila dahil hindi nila alam kung sino ang dapat lapitan. Pati po ang Pangulo, nahirapan dahil sa kawalan ng sole authority na dapat gumanap ng tungkulin para i-address ang problema ang dinidulot ng madalas na sakuna sa ating bansa. This measure seeks to address these concerns sa pamamagitan ng DDR. Magkakaroon tayo ng cabinet secretary, isang point person na isa lamang ang focus ng trabaho with a clear mandate and that is to handle all the concerns related to disaster preparedness, mitigation, rehabilitation, and disaster resilience. Ngayon, isa na lamang ang magiging boses ng pamalan. Wala nang turuan, wala na pong sisihan. Ito ang bagong department na ito ay magiging isang empowered, highly specialized, at responsive agency of the government headed by a strong-willed and competent secretary equal to the rank of other cabinet secretaries with a clear mandate and more proactive mindset in dealing with disasters. Hindi na natin antayin pa na magkaroon pa ng isa pang sakuna, matuto na tayo. You must uh, do it now. Hindi dapat ad hoc ang pag-iisip natin pagdating sa kalamidad. Na kung kailan lang magkaroon ng sakuna, saka pa tayo a-action. Ilang beses na ito nangyari sa ating bansa, dapat proactive tayo. More than structural change in the bureaucracy, we are also pushing for a more proactive mindset and approach. Kung handa ang gobyerno, magiging mas handa ang uh, Pilipino. Isa ito sa aking rason, bakit po akong nananawagan sa aking mga kasamahan? It has give the people why, what they need. Sama-sama natin isulong ang pagbuo ng Department of Disaster Resilience. Halimbawa lang po, ang tagal ng proseso ng uh, pag-download ng pera. Paki-flash lang po, sir. Tulad ngayon, ang haba-haba ng uh, calamity fund process flow, baka mamaya ilang linggo pa marirelease yung pondo. At uh, sa totoo lang, pag wala tayong cabinet level na secretary uh, mamamahala sa departamento, Yusek Halad, may tanong lang po ako sa inyo. Tuwing nagpapatawag kayo ng meeting, nagpapatawag ng mi kung ang presidente magpapatawag ng meeting, pupunta lahat si Secretary Anyo, pupunta lahat si Secretary Abisado, pupunta lahat si Secretary Lorenzana. Kung ikaw magpapatawag, ang ipapadala ng mga yan, ASEC, USEC, tama? Di ba? Kasi usually po kailangan tayo, meron tayo ng cabinet level na pareho nating secretaries. Yun, yun po punta. Di ba, Secretary Anyo, usually papadala lang natin yung may USEC natin pag may mga ganito. Pag, pero pag presidente, lahat. Present lahat yan. Well, nangyari ngayon sa earthquake sa Dabao. Sino yung pupuntahan ng mga, sino yung tatawagan ngayon ng mga mayors doon? Kahit sino na lang sila hihingi ng tulong. Kung meron kayong regional office, 
yung regional director ninyo, yun po yung mamamahala, take in charge dyan sa region na yan, at lahat ng mga uh, regional directors ng iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, DSWD, DOH, papatawag niya kagad, DOE. So, mayroong isang uh, in charge po. On a national level naman, ikaw, kung sakasakaling ikaw po ang ma-appoint, ma kung ma-approve, mas madali mo silang mapapatawag uh, uh, Secretary Halad. Siyempre, sasabihin ng Presidente, oh, Secretary Halad, ikaw ang may iwan dito. Ah. Gaya ng ginawa niya kay Secretary Tolentino nung mayon. Nung nag-meeting doon, pumunta si Presidente. O oh, sabi niya, Secretary Tolentino, ikaw muna yung uh, in charge dito. Ikaw yung may iwan, gather mo lahat ng mga iba't ibang ehensya ng gobyerno. So maganda yung preparasyon. Aside from that, maybe natakot yung mayon sa'yo, hindi pumutok. Pero bakit sa Tagaytay, pinutokan ka? Anyway, uh, yun po yung sa totoo lang po. Yun talaga ang uh, gobyerno ngayon. Uh, kailangan meron talaga tayong uh, in charge at yun pong may, may iwan dito. So, we, han, handa tayo. Anyway, to Secretary Abisado, meron ba tayong pondo para dito? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, uh Bago ko sagutin yan, may I also voice out the position of BBM? Yes, please. Uh, both on the um, pending House bills and the Senate bills, uh, taking into account uh, the uh, guiding principles no, and the purposes. On the part of BBM in general, we are in agreement on the need to improve the government's ability to respond to various calamities and disasters that our country has to endure from time to time for obvious reasons. Specifically, we're looking at this department, if ever created, to be responsible for the formulation and implementation of policies, programs, and projects that will reduce the country's vulnerabilities to natural hazards and climate change, thus ensuring safe adaptive and disaster resilient communities. This is consistent with the pronouncement of the president during his 2019 State of the Nation address. Therefore, to your previous question on the need for the creation of uh, the Department of uh, Disaster <coughs> Resilience or Department for Disaster Resiliency, we say yes. As to its feasibility, we also say yes. In addition to that would be the inclusion of the necessary budgetary requirements. We're looking at four key result areas for which reason this department has to be created. And these are the areas of disaster risk reduction, which is uh, being um, handled by many departments. Disaster preparedness and response. Recovery and for building forward better and support to operation to include internal uh, uh, management. On this basis, we're looking therefore now at the totality of the picture when we talk about disaster and natural calamities. And we know who's in charge, rather than the president having to call each one of the cabinet secretaries to give him the information that he needs. How we're gonna do it in terms of coordination is something that can be worked out as we go through crafting the provisions for this department. And this is where the interplay of the different departments, as well as of the private sector and the non-government organization and the academe will come into place. And precisely, just the same at the end of the day, we only have one department to really be looked forward to as the one in charge. And for that reason, 
I feel that we will be more responsive and quick. Rather than at this point in time, if we look at even just the flow of how the calamity funds are being processed up to its release to the implementing agency, oh my goodness, that really takes a lot of time. And that is where I think government must really be serious about it if we want to ensure that our people don't get angry, especially when they say, uh, DBM kasi, hindi nirelease yung pera. Eh, paano na naman na may re-release? Ano Ang haba ng process, process flow na yan. Yeah. Eh kung isang department lang, nasa GAA yan, comprehensive release yan, whether we like it or not, antimano nasa department Which na yan. Which brings me to my uh, question, ano? the more important uh, uh, probably information that we need from you, how much will it take? Um, start up muna. During the last hearing, start up lang your, your staff and your... Your staff attended, no? Yes. A certain Ms. Clu yes. Cleotilde Laksamana Drapete. Yes. Ang testimony niya po, ang sagot niya, 1 billion pesos. Yes. Ang Ito tanong po. ko sa kanya, ano to? PS lang? Sabi niya, no. PS, MOE, okay. capital outlay. Of course, I didn't believe her. And I still don't believe her. 1 billion pesos to create a department. A start up lang po. A start 1 up billion lang. pesos? Well, this is how uh, it's being uh, worked out. Um, the estimated minimum funding requirement is about 1.7 billion. Um, broken down as follows. Personal services at 596,126,771. MOE at 299 million. Uh, capital outlay at 173 million. Totaling uh, 1,068 or there about 1.7 billion. Regional offices, yes. provincial offices. Start uh, up. Eh. Uh, down to the regional <laughs> lamang ito. <laughs> Build, building lang po, palay ko. Ah. Hindi ka kasi yung inyong 1.7 billion. Uh, ah. And then, of course, uh, MOE. Uh, and as envisioned in some of the legislative proposals ano di sa mga bills na denial uh, mag-absorb po ito ng mga agencies it, even BFP is proposed to be absorbed under the newly uh, created or proposed uh, cre pro proposed to be created you, department of uh, disaster resilience your your honor uh, since since our position is start up lamang no and in fact this is just for the internal operations Pagka sinabi na natin projects, ibang usapan na yan. Like, ang talagang hinihikaya tayo ng Pangulo na maggawa ng mga evacuation center, among others. And therefore, ibang usapan naman yan. But ito lang kasi, we're looking at how can this department really start doing its When you say start up, one year ito. Yes. One uh, yes. fiscal year. Yes, one fiscal year lang for its operations. Ilang sasakyan ang kailangan nila? Well, we'll have to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> yun yung ano yung proposal po, nila. Madali sabihin na 1.7 billion. Pero pag kinuenta natin lahat yan, I don't think one point, not even 3 billion or 5 billion will be uh, enough. It, it therefore depends, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, on the extent as well of how the law is being crafted or to be crafted. Because then we will determine just exactly how much would be the funding requirements. But in terms of startup, to ha Ang, ang aming kasi dito, Your Honor, is on this structure itself, on the organizational structure. Uh, ano kasi ito eh? Uh, warm bodies ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. When we correct. say startup. Pero kailangan mag maging operational eh. Yes. At present, how much is the budget of NDRMC and the OCD? Administrative lang muna ito. Of course, yung uh, nasa under special purpose fund naman yung NDRRMF, ano? Uh, as I mentioned kanina, for the uh, last 10 years, nasa mga 224 billion na to pesos. Ano? Yeah. But this is under SPF. No? Wala ito sa, sa regular yeah. budget. Now, assuming that, of course, ang uh, gamitin nating benchmark, magkano yung ina-appropriate natin for NDRRMC? 
including uh, yung quick reaction funds that are distributed to uh, several departments. Ang QRF for the past 10 years, nasa mga 50, 54, ano? 54 uh, billion pesos. Uh, just for the information. Po, Secretary, no? Yes. Maraming pera ang uh, NDRRMF, yung fund. No? Maraming pera ang LDRRMF. I'll show you. Uh, example, Batangas. Nilip ko ito sa website nila. 5% of local sources, IRA and local revenues, yan ang ina-allocate nila for their local uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, disaster risk reduction management uh, fund. Ano? Ang Batangas lang, oh, for 2019, meron silang 183 billion pesos. And under 10121, meron silang five years na pag hindi nagagamit, walang calamity, nag ito sa special fund. So you, you can just imagine, kung 183 million ang Batangas sa 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, how much would it be? No, not, not, huwag naman ng Kavite. Yung Batangas alone, the local uh, disaster risk reduction management fund. 183, assuming na pababa tayo, 150 million in 2018, 120 million in 2017, and so forth and so on. Papalo kayo ng uh, at least nasa mga 600, 700 million kayo na meron dapat na andyan sa special fund. Ano? Kasi pag hindi nagasos within five years, nandyan yan. Na pag pumutok si Taal, pwede niyong hugutin. And it's not only 183 million. Now, 30% of that is supposed to be allocated to your QRF. Di ba? But I noticed, Ang natira lang talaga sa pang uh, provincial disaster risk reduction management fund ninyo at uh, 30% which is equivalent to 55 million. Yung 70% napunta sa overhead. Look. Wala naman pong calamities noong nakaraang taon. Ngayon lang pumutok yung taal. So ano nangyari doon sa pondo during the last 4 years? Can you answer the question? Maraming pondo po yung uh, not only the national but yung local because remember ang ira pa lamang ano, in 2019, 575 billion pesos distributed as follows. Ano. Pag binreak down natin ito, 132 billion, ito yung napupunta sa 82 provinces. 132 billion, the same amount napunta sa 145 cities. 195 billion, puro billion po ito ha, napupunta doon sa 1,478 uh, municipalities. 115 billion, pupunta doon sa mga barangay. Kunin nyo yung 5% ng 575 billion, that's a cool 28.7 uh, or 29 billion pesos. Of course, distributed among all LGUs ano, in different uh, amounts. Kasi ang ira naman, hindi pare-pareho eh. But hindi naman taon-taon tinatamaan tayo ng calamities. Ang tanong, paano ginagastos? Because after five years na walang calamity, pwede nang i ng LGU sa social services. And we notice some LGUs, kapag walang calamity, napupunta sa flood control, concreting ng roads, wala nang kinalaman sa disaster. Of course, flood control may kinalaman. Pero alam naman natin, pagka flood control ang pinag-usapan, ang hirap pong i-audit niyan. Kasi pagka bumagyo ulit, matatabunan, wala na, sira na si auditor. Hindi na malaman kung talagang nag-flood control, especially dredging. And that's the reason why in the 2019 budget or 2018 budget, we decided to scrap uh, from the General Appropriations uh, Act, lahat ng uh, dredging kasi sayang ang pera. Pinagkakakitaan lang ito. So, napakaraming pera ng ating uh, calamity fund, as a matter of fact. 5% uh, to 575. 
and Batangas, ito nga, 183 million in 2019 alone. Pumuntok yung Taal 2020, January 12. E di nakaipon yan kasi wala naman kayong kalamiti ng 2019, wala kayong kalamiti ng 2018, wala kayong kalamiti ng 2017, wala kayong kalamiti, no, kasi case study rito ang ginawa ko Batangas. And ito po, kinuha ko sa website ninyo ito eh. Kaya these figures are accurate. Sige po, please, uh, dito. Uh, Your Honor, ang karaniwan po na uh, nagiging trust fund po namin, special trust fund, ibig sabihin po yung natira kada taon, kalamitan po sa mga nagdaan, tama po kayo, na walang tumamang kalamitan sa Batangas, automatically, ang QRF po namin kumakarga sa trust fund sa mga susunod. Pero yun pong aming 70%, nakadevote po, sir, siya, sa pagpapagawa ng mga evacuation centers. Uh, we have uh, constructed at least eight and ongoing po yung tatlo. Uh, bumibili po kami ng response vehicles. Uh, Nagkoconduct uh, po kami ng trainings, formulation of plans. So yun po ang pinagugugulan karaniwan ng atin po 70%. And then yun po natitira. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, inform the body na ito pong 2019, meron po kaming, uh, uh, tama po yung figure, 55, ngayon pong uh, 20, uh, 2020, na siya pong ini-address namin para sa pagpatok ng bulkan. May QR po kaming 60, mul uh, 60 million, and uh, meron po kaming 140 million na 70%, which is ipinarealign na po ni Governor para i-devote po sa needs para sa Taal Bukain. Yung 70% po rito, hindi recurring ito ah. Most of this, mga one-time uh, expenditure. Eh, yung, ano nangyari sa 2018, 2017, 2016? Uh, calamity pa ninyo, yung LDRRMF or PDRRMF ninyo. Sir, uh, yun pong 70% namin, uh, obligado po kami na through the council ipaaprobahan yung amin pong uh, projects and activities na ang, ang gugugulin po yung 70%. Pagkatapos po, kapag uh, susunod pong taon, yung natira, which is the quick response fund na nagiging uh, nasasama sa... Teka muna po, yes, bago sir. magkaroon ng confusion. Yung QRF, binubunot ito do sa inyong uh, disaster fund, yes, calamity sir. fund. 30% yes, ng inyong calamity fund napupunta sa QRF. Yes, Kaya sir. para hindi lang mag-interchange uh, yung uh, mga ano. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, liliwan, naagin ko lang po. Yun pong quick response fund sa mga taong walang tumama sa amin, nagiging trust fund po siya sa susunod na taon. At yun po ay ipinoprograma din namin sa iba't iba mga projects para po sa prevention mitigation and activities related to disaster risk reduction, sir. Continuing for five years ito, ah. Kasi nasa 10121, mag a ito sa special fund, eh. Secretary Abisado. Yes, uh, just thoughts? to clarify my previous statement lang, Your Honor. Yung pong sabi naming startup is really based on uh, uh, certain uh, figures uh, and and the current uh, makeup of uh, the agencies uh, that are to compose uh, the uh, new <coughs> department, if ever. Ito po yung OCD at CCC. They have a total complement of 690 uh, with 70 divisions and sp spread out in uh, in all the regions of the country. So dito po lamang namin pinagbabasihan ang startup. Yung ibang projects are handled by the various departments. As to how it's going to add up to the departments precisely to respond to its Uh, functions and responsibilities. Yun po yung babanatan ngayon ng technical working group. How so, will you now treat the uh, NDRRM fund? Saan pupunta? I-appropriate nyo na doon sa department? Doon na nga po yan. Doon na pupunta? Doon na po yan pupunta. So kung meron kayo sa NEP in 20, for 2020 na 20 billion, doon na ma-i-appropriate yan? Doon na po yan. Kasi so yun hindi na, po, po 1.5 billion. Hindi nga po. Ang sinabi ko lang, start up lamang niya in terms of the, kasi kami organization kami. Mostly, Oo, pero, uh, pero pagdating na nga po sa projects and programs, yun na nga yung pag-uusapan. No? Kasi uh, 
we would not like also yun ang, yun ang mahirap yun. nga po eh pagka binigay natin yung 20 billion of course nakaltasan po ito sa bicam ano naging 16 billion pesos pag binigay niyo ito sa newly created department of disaster resiliency baka po maging disastrous <laughs> kasi ganyan lalabasan ito eh mapupunta sa overhead ayun naman po ang ano ayun na problema kasi mapupunta sa overhead expenses ang maiiwanan talaga to address calamity a good 30% uh, why should we allow that? Eh, Inaalaw natin sa local government eh. Oh well, precisely. Uh, the, the Congress has enough powers precisely to determine how the funds of are course, going to I be agree utilized. With you, pero alam niya naman ng Congress din eh. <laughs> anyway, for ano human ba, factor na. Unless we agree, that's going to, nothing's really going to happen. Uh, Senate, Senator Recto muna. Uh, thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. Uh, may I find out from our resource persons, mayroon bang head ngayon uh, or secretary halimbawa, a point person today for the Taal Reconstruction and Rehabilitation? Napag-usapan na ba yan sa kabinete kung sino yung mamumuno ng reconstruction at rehabilitation ng Taal? Yes, please. Sir, our default mechanism is the NDRRMC. The default mechanism yes, today. Yes, the, there is a structure in the National yeah. Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. Yes. And the Vice Chair for Rehabilitation and Recovery is okay. NEDA. Okay. But uh, in, the, in, in formulating the rehabilitation and recovery plan, we are deliberate on that. We start it with the uh, post-disaster needs assessment. And... Uh, Coordination for the conduct of uh, post-disaster needs assessment usually is uh, triggered with by OCD or NEDA. And uh, for Taal uh, Volcano Rehabilitation Recovery uh, Plan, uh, we have already started the coordination last week. Okay. Uh, if I may follow up my question. So, the default position today is that it will be you. Yes, sir, as uh, the executive director. OCD as the head of the secretariat. Okay. Now, and the yes, let me take this opportunity to ask you, magkano na ba ang total damages? Preliminary assessment. Dahil, uh, ngayon pa lang naman pinayagan umuwi yung mga tao eh. So we would not have a full picture. But today, uh, with regard to your records, magkano ang total damages? Uh, based on the report uh, we got from the different agencies, and it is about uh, three billion, sir. But uh, three the billion, yes, sir. Yes, three I billion. Hindi ho ba agriculture lang yon? Uh, Agri yes, pa lang yes, yon. yes. But the total cost will be identified during the conduct of post-disaster needs assessment. Yes, I understand that. But don't you have preliminary data? Because I do have preliminary preliminary data, and I'm not the executive director. Alimbawa, sa agriculture, mga 3.5 billion. Is that correct? More or less? Thereabouts. Ah? Batangas is 3.2 siguro. Okay? And uh, ano yung pinakamalaki doon sa damage sa agriculture sector sa Batangas? Well, uh, would you know the data? I think uh, it's the Department of Agriculture has this uh, data sir. Because we got the... We no, the but don't you have... Hindi na ba sinasubmit sa inyo yung data ng Department of Agriculture? Because kayo ang sinasabi nyo default head ngayon ng reconstruction. Yes, sir. So you but the council the is composed of so many no, I understand agencies that. and the data reflected in the CTREP comes, came from no, the I, different I agencies composing that. that All I'm council. saying is that do you have the information today already? We have there in the ref in the situational report, uh, it is in the vicinity of uh, or about 3.2 billion. Correct. So, ano yung pinakamalaki doon sa have agriculture? To, I'll have to dig into the situational report, sir. Okay. I don't have a copy of so that. So, roughly fisheries, 1.6 billion. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but you know, we, I already have the data here. I'm just asking if the executive director knows damages already. Preliminary man lang. 
Related to the uh, point uh, being raised by Senator Rector, how many PDNAs have you uh, crafted post-disaster needs assessment? Because napakaraming calamities eh. Yeah, for last How year. many PDNAs? Oh. Kasi uh, uh, sa 10121, one month after, kailan mag-craft na kayo ng PDNA? Kasi yun ang magiging basis ng rehabilitation plan eh. Hindi makaproceed makapaggawa ng rehabilitation plan kung walang post-disaster needs assessment. How many have you done so far? Uh, in all Not those... Not under your watch, ah. Even, say, for the past five years, nakailan kayo PDNA? Uh, marami na, sir. And uh, I can count the... Oh, there are PDNAs uh, conducted at the regional level and even at the local government unit level. But uh, at the level of the National Disaster uh, in the RMC level, meaning there is participation of personnel from the central offices of the national government agencies, I, count, I can count only a few. Uh, uh, PDNA for one. Yes, sir. Because we have been able to get you sick, Papa. You came up with, uh, with a complete PDNA, yeah? complete uh, needs assessment. So thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pangalawang tanong, no? So agriculture, more or less preliminary, 3.2 billion. Okay? Uh, ilan yung nakatira sa Taal Volcano na hindi na makakabalik? We have an estimate uh, about 3,700 individuals. Only 3,700? Well, that's the... That's the report we got from the regional offices. Yes. Where we, May, yeah. the latest, uh, the latest. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's roughly eight to ten thousand. Lito, ilan ba? Eight to ten thousand. Sir, uh, nagbabariate pa siya. Eight thousand, sir, is 8, our 000. assessment. Nagbabariate po siya sa daytime. I mean, not nighttime, kasi po because of the tourists coming. Yes. So yes. yung involved po sa livelihood is dumadami po sa araw. Okay, so eto maliwanag. Yung walon libo hanggang sampu yan, about 2,000 families yan, okay? Yun sigurado, hindi na makakabalik sa Taal Volcano. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, hahanapan natin yan ng tirahan. Yes, Your Honor. Okay? Uh, ilang hektare ang kailangan dyan? Meron na ba kayong pag-aaral tungkol dyan? And how much will it cost to... Uh, relocate 10,000 people or 2,000 families. Meron na ba kayong konting pagsusuri tungkol dyan? Do we have any data on that? Uh, Your Honor, as of today po ay uh, meron pong uh, in-identify ang provincial government sa municipality of Ibaan na kung saan po lahat yung taga pulo ay doon po namin uh, itinatransfer. Uh, okay, gano'ng uh, kalaki yun? Uh, that is around 40 hectares. 40 hectares. We have also uh, uh, land owned by the provincial government, or the national government identified, na i-request ni governor kung kakailangan sa national government. So, uh, we have in Nasugbu, yeah. we have in Rosario, and uh, we San have Juan. in San Juan, Your yes. Honor. Okay, now, thank you for that response. The re you know, the reason why I was asking the executive director, no, no offense, ha? Huh? is iba yung kung tagadong ka, mas alam mo yung problema. I do not expect the executive director to know all these data. And that's why I proposed for the reconstruction of uh, families who have been affected by the Taal Volcano, a Taal Commission with cabinet members and the governor of Batangas, Cavite, so on and so forth. Then, mas alam ng lokal yung nitty-gritties niyan. Okay? Now, the problem with an NDREMC or the problem with the department is sa dami ng sakuna, bagyo, earthquake, whatever, halimbawa, nung nakaraan taon, tatlong po siguro yan. Kung ang Department ng Disaster Risk Reduction or NDREAM siya mamamahala niyan, tatlong po rin yung, re re yung rehabilitation reconstruction. Okay? Na baka walang focus dyan. 
Okay, that's uh, that's the point. No? Now, um, so yan maliwanag dalawang libong bahay na kagat ang gagawin. Magkano abutin yung dalawang libong bahay na yan? Tansan ninyo. Would you have, would anyone here have any data on that? Housing department. Do we have a representative from the housing department here? Uh, apparently none. Okay. Now I've done some rough calculations on that. Okay. Now, ilan naman sa tansya ninyo ang nasirang bahay? Do we have data on that? Do we have anyone here? Uh, ang estimate namin, roughly 22,000 houses will be affected. At, at uh, 500,000 each, that's 11 billion. Assuming. Okay. Ang pinakamalaking problema dito yung mga nasirang bahay. Number one, yung ililipat natin, pangalawa, yung nasirang bahay. Okay? And then maybe I should ask, na, and then, of course, public works. Do we have a representative of public works here? Magkano naman yung public goods na nasira? Kalsada, hospital, tulay. Meron na ba tayong initial data? Yes, please. 137 million. For the DPWH, preliminary. Yes, yes. preliminary. Thank Lemery, you for that. Lem, uh, Batangas only, Lemery Laurel. Yes, yes, yes. So I have the data also. So preliminary, palaki ng palaki lang yan, di ba? Okay, now, having said that, then, uh, what about economic losses? Uh, maybe the NEDA can help us out here. Yung, uh, magkano mga negosyong nasira we, we did a, a, a rough calculation, um, yeah. uh, Mr. Chair, on the basis of uh, the foregone income in industry sector within the, you know, outside of the 14 kilometer, including the 14 kilometer. Uh, for industry, it would be 711.9 million pesos. And for yeah. services... Yeah. Tabletop survey lang yan, ano? Yes, Based yes. on land area. Right, right. Based right. on, to explain it to the committee... Exactly. The gross value added yes, of the province, exactly. based on land area, tancha tancha. Yes, po. Please yep. continue. Sige. And for the services sector, it's 2.8 billion. Uh, Magatwid, siya sabi niyo potential loss. Total, including uh, the agriculture sector, would be about seven billion. Seven billion, uh, separate from the houses. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Public works, so on and so forth. So. Sa makatwid, nasa 15 to 20 billion na tayo. More or less. Is that correct? Asset? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Including yes. housing? Including housing. Okay. Yes. Now, this, this does not include the yes. you know, habitation. Magkano available na local government sa budget? Uh, talking of the uh, LDRRMF, uh, Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Your Honor, Meron po kami sa 2019 na uh, 200 uh, million. Magkano na tira sa trust fund ninyo? Yung na tira po sa trust fund po namin. Uh, ang trust fund po namin as of to date is 113 million. So 113 plus your 200. May 313 uh, kayo. 300 million plus. Now, you 5% calamity fund, minimum yun. Yes, sir. Sabi ng batas. Hindi naman sinasabi at least 5%. So, Pwede kayong gumasos ng mas malaki. Hindi ho ba ubutang ang gobyerno ng provincial government ng 4 na bilyon? Uh, Your Honor, uh, may loan po ang uh, provincial government at yes. part of that loan ay nag-meeting po kahapon ng finance with yes. the governor yes. at ang kanya pong decision is uh, i-devote yung uh, at least 2 billion okay. to address the problem. Okay, so madali. Meron na tayong 2.3. Yes, Your Honor. Let's simplify muna. May 2.3 na. Okay. Senator, just to put things in context yes. and uh, to explain where Senator Recto is coming from, yes. included in the agenda in today's hearing is Senate Resolution 1275, 
introduced by Senator Recto, yes. creating the Taal Volcano Rehabilitation and Development Commission. So, hindi naman po tayo limitado doon sa creation ng department. Correct. So, yes, yes. yun lang. Yeah. With the permission of my colleagues, no? especially the chairman, no? you know, I filed that bill thinking also that there will be a grand eruption and that damages could be more than 50 billion, maybe even 100 billion, anticipating because nasa alert level 4 tayo, imminent hours and weeks na pwede sumabog ng base surge. That 14 kilometer radius, we follow that gross value added and all of that, the damages could have been 50 billion, maybe even 100 billion. Pero maraming salamat sa Panginoon na parang baka sana naman hindi na pumutok at nandito na lang tayo, we're roughly within a 15 to 20 billion range. More or less. We've identified roughly 2.3 with the local government. Okay? And kung ganun kalaki yung damage na 50 to 100, possibly the reconstruction rehabilitation will take a decade. Mahabang panahon yan. Hindi lampas sa administration ni President Duterte. Kaya, we filed a Taal Commission. Ngayon, kung hindi naman naging ganun kalaki yung damage, maybe naman matapos natin to in two years and a half, and maybe there might be no need for a Taal Commission na kaya na ng pondo natin sa taong ito, ganun din ang lokal na pamalaan. So let me put that on record as well, hoping na hindi na pumuto. Okay? So kailangan pa rin natin ng mga 15 to 17.5 billion pa. Tanong ngayon, uh, Secretary of the DBM, nandito ba? Yes. Okay. The record, yes. he uh, sent me a note na asking permission to excuse himself. Anyway, nandito naman si Yusek uh, Janet. Oh, but before he leaves, maybe, but oh, I can answer the question yeah. muna. Okay. Oh, di ba? Magkano ang 2020 calamity fund natin? 16. Magkano yung continuing appropriation ng 2019? Yes. Okay, so uh, therefore you have about 22 billion. Uh, at wala pang nagagastos masyado dyan. Kasi January 28 pa lang eh. Diba? So, so far, sufficient pa? The available pa? Yes. right now is about uh, 5 billion na lamang kasi may previous releases tayo. Ng uh, 2019? Yes, okay. 2019. So, 16 plus 5, 21 ang available. Yes. Okay? Kung hindi tayo tatamaan ng bagyo, at sigurado tatama, kukulangin yan for the year. Oh, yes. Kasi tinamaan na tayo ng... Yung 20... Pero naka-earmark na rin ito. May naka-earmark naka tayo sa... Out of this, uh, Your Honor. May naka-earmark tayo para sa Marawi. I'll get to that. Uh, yes. And then... And then the earthquake in... The earthquake in Davao as well. Yes. Uh, so far, yun yung yes. may naka-earmark So, ang tanong ko, will we need a supplemental budget? Um, Kung dito pa lang sa Batangas at Cavite, nakikita na natin na more or less 17, 20 billion ang kakailanganin. May 2 billion yung local government. At kakailanganin pa ba natin ngayon ang supplemental o pwede hindi na muna? I'd really like to you know, think where the president is coming from. No? Nung nag-meeting kami sa Batangas. And when he emphasized the need for evacuation centers to be Built. Uh, put up or built, no? Kasi nakita niya talagang hirap ng mga tao. And therefore, uh, ano bang gagawin ng gobyerno? Just so maibsan yung kahirapan nila, especially in times of calamities. At yun yung nakita niya. At sabi nga niya, if necessary, let's come up with a supplemental budget. And he'd like that to be put up, not only in Taal, but in all the other areas. Even those that have been previously hit. Yes. yes. The point is this, no? Uh, 
you know, may, may the, the question is, do we need a supplemental budget or halimbawa, magkano ang total MOE ng national government today? 1 trillion, 1.2, 1.5 trillion, thereabouts. If you had a 5% savings for all your MOE, kung 1 trillion yan, 50 billion na yun, di ba? And then you can always augment the calamity fund under the law. Ibig sabihin, if Congress appropriated 20 billion for calamity fund, is it illegal for you, there is an item, is it illegal for you to augment it through savings from other departments, from 20, maging 40, double in? Nothing illegal, right? Okay? Precisely. So, so we can always do that at the proper time. At the proper time. Yes. That's the point I'm driving at, no? So at this point in time, January pa lang, you have sufficient resources, okay? And at the appropriate time, you can always augment the calamity fund through savings from other departments. So you may no need, not need a supplemental, di ba? In fact, our effort, Your Honor, has always been to coordinate with the other departments. Yes. And it looks like at this point in time, hindi pa talaga kailangan. At saka every year naman. Yes. Hindi naman nagagasos yung total appropriation sa entire national government. Yes, Your Honor. I agree. So you can always augment. Okay, now. How much is the government already prepared? Sa ngayon lang, ha? Because I heard the President say, when he went to Batangas, and I thank him for it, together with Senator Goh, who is also a Batanggenyo native. Okay. Kababayan ko yan, mas, ano yan, mas gwapo sa akin yan. Okay. Tagataal yan, eh. Having said that, Having said that, no? uh, having said that, how much are you, the president said 30 billion. He's prepared to assist the province with 30 billion. Okay? So ngayon alam natin, through a supplemental budget, pero ngayon alam natin na 21 billion more or less available. Napag-usapan na ba ninyo na kailangan mabilis yung pagtulong din natin dito eh? Uh, how much is the national government prepared to assist the Taal volcano victims? Based on available resources, yeah. uh, that, that's been said already, and yeah. that we can use that amount at any time. At any time. Yes. Okay. Uh, so otherwise, um, we are not also in a position precisely to come up with a supplemental budget. Kasi kaumpisa lang ng taon. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, the, uh, the uh, funds are still trickling, uh, trickling in. Uh, could, we, could you, you know, we, we're having a live conversation here today. And many, many evacuees, ma inc incidentally today, marami pa kami evacuees, ha? Yung 10,000 na nakatira sa Tal Volcano, walang uuwian yon. Evacuees pa rin yon. Marami pa rin nas nasiraan ng bahay, hindi rin makauwi. Okay? Ang pansya namin doon, mga 20,000 households. Now, having said that, makakaasa ba yung mga biktima ng taal na nandyan ng national government na agad-agad? Tubulong na kaagad. Halimbawa, ah, uh, why not just give cash assistance doon sa mga tinamaan yung mga bahay na nasira? Halimbawa, 500,000 each. That way, you give them cash, bibili nila yung gamit nila, it helps the local economy pa. Makakatulong sa loko, local na ekonomiya pa. Your Honor, to answer that, uh, kami yeah. naman, taga-allocate lang eh. Yeah. Uh, it's really the, uh, the responsible agencies and departments uh, in fact, uh, magmumula yung request sa kanila kung paano uh, gagawin at anong klaseng uh, uh, so tulong side, ang may bibigay nila. Okay, on your side, you're committing na hindi problema yung cash, di ba? Ay, hindi problema yung pera. Hindi problema yung appropriation. We, we, we have to find a way to make money available. Kasi yes. gobyerno tayo eh. Correct. And the cash is available. In mm -hmm. fact, nung, nung debate namin ni Ping last year sa budget ninyo, uh, we know that you overborrowed in 2019, you will overborrow in 2020, you're building your cash with the treasury. Hindi problema yung cash. And there is an appropriation. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
So, sa lalong madaling panahon, so let me cut this short. I know there's a lot of agenda. Let me cut this short. Maybe the NDRMMC can start studying the reconstruction rehabilitation phase for the Taal victims. Pinayagan na natin ang mumuhi mga tao. Huh? Inaasahan yan yung tulong ng ating pamalaan. Nag-commit na yung local government ng probinsya, may dalawang bilyon. Make, the, make your final assessment and let's hit the ground running in rehabilitating and reconstructing families affected by the uh, Taal Volcano eruption. How long will it take for you to submit to this committee yung plano ninyo sa Taal Reconstruction and Rehabilitation? Tatansya mo. Yes, I'll have to uh, we uh, ask for the Before the rehabilitation plan, you have to come up with your PDNA muna, di ba? Mm. Yeah. As a requirement. So, yeah. ang tanong muna dapat, kailan nyo matatapos yung PDNA? So, uh, by April, sir. April? Yes, sir. But, uh, pa lang eh. So, walang tulong between February, March? No, sir. You know, sir, uh, there are early recovery interventions which the different agencies can now carry out utilizing their QRF and yes. uh, current budget. And yes. uh, that is part of my recommendation always to the president whenever he visits areas affected. Yes. That agencies, concerned agencies like Department of Agriculture, DTI, okay. DSWD, provide yes. uh, some form of livelihood and financial assistance because they have the budget. Yeah, yeah but that would be part of the plan. Is, diba? We'll make it part of still part of the yeah. plan, sir. When can you submit to this committee, Halimbawa, an initial plan. Yung, hindi naman yes. April, February. Yes, February yung, 19, uh, next there week. will be already some drafts ano of the RRP. Next week? We have already met, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, we have already met, we have already come up with the rehabilitation and recovery framework for Taal volcano eruption. And our timeline, Mr. Chair, would be to come up with some initial drafts by February, by end of February. Kailan naman mag-uumpisa gumasas ang gobyerno pag tulong? They're already starting to, you know, uh, uh, spend some money for the assistance. Recovery. Katulad ng ano? Like what? Like what? Well, uh, DSWD has, aside from food packs, uh, provision of food packs, they have cash for work. Uh, no. Uh, oh. Dolly has... Uh, yeah, but what, what, the, the po what, what we're asking, what is the commitment... Yung food pack, tapos na tayo doon. Yes, okay. uh, Meron pa rin, may continuing evacu evacuees, ha? Pero yung ano, yung reconstruction? Well, of course, for the reconstruction, sir, uh, uh, With your permission, sir, yeah. for example, kunwari, sa Department of Housing, anong commitment ng NHA? May ganong... Oh. Well, it's in their mandate, sir, ma'am. Yes. We'll just have to harness that. Yes. Is may DSWD ba dito? Yes. What do you intend to do this week? Starting this week, may programa na ba kayo? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the DSWD has already requested to the uh, DBM for the or to the RMC for the allotment of the cash for work. And, and magkano halaga nun? Uh, sir, uh, how much did you request? The amount of the uh, cash per work is the 75% of the minimum wage rate of the re of the region. No, I'm talking about how much I know the details of that. Magkano ang are you allocating for Batangas? Uh, and uh, Central Ralph, yes. DSWD, meron kayong QRF na yes. 1.2 billion, ah? 1.25 billion in 2019. Tapos 2020, meron pa uli kayong 1.25 billion peso. So, meron kayong... 2.5 billion. Kasi continuing naman eh. We passed a, not a resolution, ano? we passed legislation para ma-extend yung gamit hanggang December 31, 2020. So available sa inyo yung, nagamit nyo na ba yung 1.25 billion in 2019? How much of it is left? Kasi ito yung pwede nyong gamitin in the absence of the release uh, from uh, DBM do sa NDRMF. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we are using the uh, 2019 uh, continuing funds, the Mindanao earthquake, the uh, Typhoon Tiso. Uh, Magano na iwanan doon sa 1.25 billion, 
na QRF ninyo in 2019? Uh, your Honor, sorry sir, I was not able to bring the uh, finan latest financial report of our Of course, yung 1.25 billion sa 2020, hindi pa nagalaw. Uh, yes sir. Yes, sir, because uh, there's ongoing, uh, the 2019 is being used right now for the uh, Midian Earthquake, the Ursula, and Typhoon Tisoy. So to the DSWD, how much are you prepared to spend, the DSWD, for the victims of Taal Volcano? Uh, Mr. Chair, as of now, we are, there's ongoing the process of the uh, damage uh, assistant it needs analysis to finalize the figure, so I cannot be able yeah, to... Kailan matatapos yun? Yes, sir. No, kailan matatapos? Uh, maybe sir, next week there will be a meeting with the in the RMC, uh, the response cluster. Kailan yung meeting ninyo? Uh, we are waiting, sir, for the uh, notice of our uh, interagency, like the uh, OCD Secretariat, to finalize the figures. Oh, sir, you said, uh, kailan ang meeting ninyo? There was a meeting last week, sir, and there is a meeting today. To, so after this hearing? No, you sir, uh, a there is a meeting at the region. I sent my director for rehabilitation okay. recovery because I cannot okay. attend to that. Y you know, I know that there are many other senators who want to speak, no? so let me end this way. No? Could you submit to the committee actions that you intend to take to assist the Al volcano victims, both in Batangas and in Cavite, at kung meron pang iba, huh? uh, immediately? Let's say by next week, initial actions that you will be taking, Yes, sir. We'll, uh, we'll Para do naman that. we can communicate that with our people. Yes, sir. We'll do that. Uh, this uh, this particular scenario, sir, is uh, difficult. It's different from all other uh, disasters that we encountered. After a typhoon, immediately we can conduct that. Dalawang thing. araw, tapos na. Yeah. Uh -huh. But for this, uh, while uh, the area was still in lockdown, we cannot send people to we conduct understand that assessment. We yes, Otherwise we understand that. But initially, yes, initially, my advice, kung sana pwede, mag-usap-usap na kayo, uh, initial man lang, as information comes in, meron na kayo kagad na plano, programa. Dahil yung mga biktima ng taal, um, nag-uwi, naglilinis na yung mga yan, marami dyan, hindi makakabalik sa mga tahanan nila. A big portion here will be through the NHA siguro. Housing. Ha? Palagay ko kalahate ng budget na kakailanganin dito para sa pabahay. Okay? Uh, so, let me end with that. Uh, I thank my chairman and to my colleagues for yes. allowing me, giving me the time oh, yes. to yes. air this. Thank Just for much. the information of uh, the Honorable Senator Rap Recto, uh, for our computation, there's about 1.5 trillion pesos for MOOE for fiscal year 2020. Just, just on that note, yeah. kung 1.5 trillion yan, a 5% savings is 75 billion, which you can use to augment your calamity fund. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And the long and short of this all, really, as we try to branch out to many other departments when we talk about disaster and natural calamities, pwede pa pag-isahin na lang natin? Total naman kung merong budget yan, subject to presidential approval para hindi masabi na uh, kung saan yan na napupunta. Uh, in that sense, uh, mas madali ang response eh. Otherwise... Uh, tama po yan, pero may maraming questions eh. Ano yung working relationship ng bagong department with the other agencies? Kukunin yung ibang agencies eh. Yun ang proposal nila eh. Including the Bureau of Fire from, uh, from the ILG, PBOX, and then uh, housing, maybe NHA, Pag-asa, Ang proposal po is to absorb all of this. So, ang uh, ibig sabihin ba, pati yung DPWH, magkakaroon ng mababawasan at ano, <coughs> bibili rin ng bako yung Department of Disaster. Bibili rin ng bulldozer. Ang, kaya so, ito po yung mga questions na... Doon yun sa paggawa natin ng batas. Opo. And I'm saying, what we're saying is that where we are more comfortable and in a way assured that things will not go haywire, even as we create this department, ay pag-usapan natin, those that will have to be retained, but precisely isa lang ang pupunta ng lahat ng information at siyang department na yan, so that pag collate niya lahat ng information, he would know what to recommend to the president or to the cabinet. Rather than, bawat isa tatawagin mo, yun yung point ko lang, kasi 
it. When no, we I'm talk just, of who's in charge here, wala. No, let's put somebody in charge. What if? Uh, taking off from uh, the bill filed by Senator Marcos, let's elevate OCD to a cabinet level uh, rank you know, and name it an authority. So cabinet secretary na rin yan, hindi siya bibili ng bako, hindi siya bibili ng bulldozer, gagamitin niya pa rin yung mga existing agencies. Pagka meron, well, creating a department entails too much uh, bureaucracy, expenses. Yun lang po yan. Kasi I'll be defending this on the floor. Yes. Ang, and that's why I'm asking these questions. Because precisely these questions will be asked of me. And uh, when I stand there, I must be able to answer these questions that I'm asking you. Yeah. Precisely. Be, be it an authority or a department, all that we're saying is we need to act fast. And from our end, all that we're saying also is that we would like to have these funds released directly. So not necessarily the a department. As long as there's unit of command, as long as there's the responsibility the is pinpointed. No, no, it's not up to us because precisely you're the resource person. Eh? Yeah, That's but why I'm asking you. Precisely what we're saying is, even if we say it's going to be yeah, a department, but day, yes, yeah. it's still the law. But we need your input. Nga, eh. Oh, yes. And which we are... Precisely, yeah. all that we're saying is let's fast track all of this. Because people cannot, cannot wait, really. Mr. Chair? Take a moment, Senator Tolmona. Oh, uh, just one last uh, uh, reaction and perhaps to, to supplement the questioning of Senator Ralph. Uh, tama po yung tanong ni, yung sinabi ni Senator Recto na kung talagang tumuloy ito, there has got to be a Taal Commission similar to the Pinatubo Commission of the 90s. Pero dahil nag-subside na, we now look at the default. Perhaps I, I, I would like to manifest, and, and uh, Yusek Khaled should be listening, that we have a newly created department, uh, Valentine's Day of 2019, uh, Section 5, Republic Act 11201, and I'd like, to, I'd like this to be placed on record. Meron po tayong Department of Housing. Ang isa sa trabaho niya, and I quote in toto with the, with the uh, permission of the Honorable Chair, one of the functions, formulate a framework for resilient housing and human settlement as a basis for the mechanism for a post-disaster housing and resiliency, planning, research and development, extension, monitoring, evaluation of the program, projects. And projects would be the opera, opera, operationalization of all, of all post-disaster uh, uh, assessments, monitoring and activities related, uh, related to protect vulnerable communities from the adverse effects of climate change and disaster. Ibig sabihin po rito, yung bagong batas na pinasa ng Kongreso ay ang lead default, uh, with due respect, is the Department of Housing. And yung pinakita nyo kaninang, no offense, for pillars, hindi po kasali yung Department of Housing. We have an interim secret secretary, uh, Secretary Del Rosario. Parang hindi siya kasama dito sa pinakita kanina sa... Uh, yung lumalabas na yeah, sa thematic. So, Wala pa kasi Department of Housing nun eh. I, pero I'm kasama sorry, yung HADC. I'm sorry Mr. Chair, pero lalabas po dito uh, to answer Secretary, uh, Senator Recto, ang default po dito, naririnig ako nung regional NEDA, is the Department of Housing for purposes of housing, not NDREAMC. I'm not adding another layer of bureaucratic con confusion, but to, to streamline everything. Sino yung in charge? Department of Housing and Resettlement. Uh, just for the record, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Bongo, Mr. Chair, would like to conclude this. Uh, Sir, Senator, Senator Bongo, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. To Secretary Halad, base kanina sa pinakita nating proseso, yung napakatagal, since uh, pumutok yung uh, Taal Volcano, meron na ba kayong na-release sa kanila? Magkano na po? Actually, wala pa, Sir, kasi... Yung ano naman natin, yung pagiging proactive is uh, nandun sa ano, yung mga LGUs, meron silang pondo nila. Yung mga different agencies, meron silang QRF. And there is one provision in the QRF, that is in the GAA. It is non-transferable. Meaning, it can be only transferred in the form of services or in-kind. Hindi pwedeng yung QRF ng, ng uh, OCD or DSWD ilipat sa LGU. For the top up of their end dream, uh, local dream fund, they should initiate a request 
we will process that. If uh, they are qualified, then maybe the president will approve. And then, if I may, if I may add, no. So, what happened now in Taal? Did you see the Vice Mayor of 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 Taal? Did you see the o si Yusek uh, soli Solidum, o kung sino man yung sinasabi niyang dapat niyang sundin. Kung meron na tayong department secretary, ito na lang magsasalita, ito yung papakinggan natin, ito yung masusunod, ito yung point person, ito na lang. Para isa, isa lang po ang ating uh, direction tuwing merong mga ganong nangyayari. Kasi minsan, no, sabi ni Secretary Anyo, Huwag kayong bumalik. Eh, gusto bumalik ni Vice Mayor. Kaya ang dami na niyong pinagtuturo. Ngayon, pati si Yusek uh, Sulidum. So, uh, sana meron tayong isang uh, point person. Nakatutok lang talaga siya na po ang in-charge, siya yung papakinggan natin tuwing may mga ganitong uh, pangyayari. At uh, pati sa release of funds, kung meron na kayong sariling departamento, o pabilis yung pag-release, hindi katulad ngayon, nakabalik na sila sa kanilang mga pamamahay. Pero yung assistance mula sa gobyerno, wala pa rin nare-release. So, meron konti, pero uh, wow, uh, sa iba't ibang ahensya po ng gobyerno ang nagre-release. Kung ikaw yung masusunod. So, pabor ka ba rito, uh, Secretary Halad, sa creation? Kung sakaling uh, magiging secretary ka, pabor ka dito? Sir, even Rang if si I'm not Trump become the Pro head Pro. of that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> even if I'm not, uh, I will not become the head of that uh, department or uh, agency, sir, I am in favor of elevating uh, the, struct the current structure to department level or, or secretary level. Good but answer, uh, but Mr. Kalan. But yeah, not necessarily department. department. Ang, ang important is, department. alam natin sa military, di ba, unit of command. Yes, sir. No. But uh, even no in the current system, now. sir, we have a, an in-place coordination uh, mechanism or system. In this particular scenario, the affected area is only Batangas, part of Batangas. And uh, decis the decision uh, should, also should come from the governor. But of course, he will listen to the advice of PBOX. Then, Teresa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, sayang nakaalis na si Sec Wendell, pero nandito pa naman si, si Ma'am Yusek, Janet. Um, I was, uh, just for the record, I was very glad, Mr. Chair, marinig yung sinabi ni Sec Wendell na open sila, uh, not exclusively to a the proposed department, but even to an authority. And naalala ko, sinabi po yan ni Vice Admiral Pama kanina, that that was in fact, one of the recommended amendments sa 10121 na binuo nung pre-sunset uh, review na technical working group noon. So maganda pong hindi tayo palundag-lundag but we uh, continue from where we left off before para mas rational yung policy making natin. And I was especially glad to hear that from Sec. Wendell kanina na open din sila kahit sa authority kasi yung naunang sinabi din na initial, initial man na budget to set up the proposed department na una sinabi nila 1.7 bilang, parang napaka-modest, Mr. Chair. Hindi naman yun proposed budget sa mga small agencies natin tuwing dinedebate ang GAA, but certainly not a large agency. Not a large agency with the ambitious stated objectives nung proposed department. Parang medium size lang na agency. At kung maiwan lang sa ganon, then might as well balikan yung mga recommended amendments nung uh, technical working group noon. Uh, might as well upgrade the NDRRMC or the existing arrangements, gaya yung sinabi ni Yusek Halad, including the OCD, and be open dun sa uh, yung possibly uh, an authority. So an alternative dun sa uh, department. If I may add lang, Mr. Chair, isang uh, related question, uh, dahil nandito tayo ngayon uh, discussing this proposed department, the Taal Commission, but also always at the top of our minds yung uh, novel coronavirus situation. Um, uh, since uh, disaster encompasses human and nature-induced disasters, so ano na nga po pala 
matanong ko kay kina Yusek Halad, yung paghahanda para sa coronavirus. Because I imagine whether the proposed department o ang isang authority built from the current NDRRMC ay titingin din sa mga health-related uh, disasters at yung dapat na uh, disaster resilience, health disaster resilience ng ating lipunan. So ano na po ba yung mga paghahanda para sa uh, coronavirus, Mr. Chair? Uh, Your Honor, uh Always, uh, we will wait for the advice of DOH whether there is going to be a need for NDRIMC uh, preparedness. And we have done that in the past, like for example, uh, uh, in addressing the uh, dengue uh, epidemic, as well as uh, polio. But uh, the initiative will come from DOH because uh, they're the ones who are uh, the expert on that. So whether or not we involve the ND NDRMC, uh, that will that will come from DOH. Fair enough, Mr. Chair. At iniintay pa natin yung proclamation mismo ng World Health Organization kung global health uh, crisis ba ito o hindi. Uh, but certainly, we, uh, DOH uh, speaking on this, baka mas urgent Certainly, mas urgent ito dun sa recurrence ng polio. Baka mas urgent kesa pa sa dengue, lalo na dahil unknown quantity ito. And again, Mr. Chair, just to reiterate, I would be curious to know if the old TWG ay nagkaroon din ng proposed amendment sa 10121 kaugnay ng lahat ng klase ng disaster, including potential health disasters, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Gatchelian and then uh, Senator Binay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I just have one question. And actually, uh, and also a request to uh, Yusek Halad and the RMC. Yusek, have you conducted an analysis ng mga calamity funds of those LGUs na nasa hazardous or dangerous areas as declared by our geohazard maps? Have you analyzed, for example, in Taal? No? Obviously, Taal po is an active area yung mga LGUs around the area po, ay uh, uh, fourth, or class. fourth or fifth class, and also they're prone to uh, uh, massive evacuations, they're prone to uh, disaster disruptions. Pero napag-aralan na ba ho natin yung kanilang calamity fund? That kind of uh, assessment, uh, perhaps Kasi your honor. In, in my view, meron ho, in my, my analysis, yung allocation ng calamity fund is uh, there's inequity no hindi pantay-pantay yung allocation ng calamity fund i'll give you a very concrete example ho kukuwentuhan ho kami ni senator binay ang makati ho earns about 15 billion and 5% ho nila is about 700 million a year e wala naman ho silang bulkan no diba? And sa Batangas ho, kanina, nakita ko kanina, yung calamity fund nila is about 200 million na malapit sa vulkan. No? Among there, marami pa ho doon geological hazards. So meron ho tayong inequity pagdating po sa calamity fund. Naturally, those, kung marami kang pera, you can prepare. No? You can do uh, uh, efficient and effective disaster preparedness. Pero kung maliit ka ang pera mo, you can only do so much. No? So therefore, ang aking ano is, I just want to request from, o, from, from NDRMC to, to analyze itong calamity fund. And maybe in, as part of our amendments to the law is to improve the equity mechanisms of the N A NDRMC or the calamity fund. Meaning kung ikaw ay nasa uh, delikadong lugar o sa geohazard na lugar, National government should give you additional subsidy for pre-disaster activities. Dahil ako naniniwala ho ako, dapat ho palakasin natin ang LGUs. Pagdating ho sa disaster, we cannot be too bureaucratic and too centralized. We have to empower the uh, LGUs. And the only way to empower the LGUs is to give them more funds. But we have to admit, a fifth-class municipality can hardly buy uh, sat phones or can hardly buy anything that will constitute uh, disaster preparedness. So let's study this angle because we cannot also push our LGUs too much kung wala silang pondo. And this is where uh, national government should come in 
we make it equitable. No? For example, Batangas should have more. No, the municipalities there should have more. And in order for them to have more, national government should subsidize it. No? Um, that's one of the amendments that I would like to propose in the, in the law because ito nakita na natin. If you, uh, I went to the one in Davao, ganun rin. No? I went, yung mga nasa Eastern Seaboard na uh, municipalities, ganun rin, tuwing dumadaan po ang bagyo, takes them months before they can rehabilitate. And even yung as simple as yung mga tents, hindi ho nila mabili. Pero taon-taon dumadaan ho sa kanila ang bagyo. No? So let's look at this because my view is the first line of defense are the LGUs. If the LGUs are efficient and capable, national government will have lesser headache when it comes to mitigation and response. That's my comment, uh, Ms. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, before I recognize uh, my other colleagues, may we just hear from the uh, Provincial uh, Disaster Risk Management Officer of Cotabato. Kindly share with us. Ano, nasa na kayo ngayon after the earthquake? Nakalimutan na kayo? Yeah, th this is not funny, ano? Kasi ang nangyayari, pag may disaster, yung first response natin, nandyan lahat eh. And then after a few months or even weeks at may panibagong disaster, nakakalimutan yung naunang uh, natamaan ng disaster. So yes. we would like to hear from uh, Cotabato, please. Thank you. Thank you to our Honorable Committee Chair. My courtesies to the members of this committee and all the other guests and resource persons. All right, so we're talking about LGUs. Really coming from my heart, you know, as PDRRMO. <laughs> All right, uh, there's a need, there's a need for national government to look into RA 10121. Because much is really asking from us results on, this, on the four thematic areas, but look at the most important human resources. How many are there in the plantilla position? Right? Many, I guess, in this moment in time, there's still a lot of LGUs who are not able to institutionalize their LDRRMOs. But I would like to commend Office of Civil Defense 12, because in Region 12, we were able to make it to manage the Mindanao series, especially in the province of Cotabato. We were not able to turn over the incident management, the command, to the regional level because of collaboration and coordination. Uh, I would like to really emphasize this because this is our concern, sir. We have to institutionalize our LDRRMOs in the local government units. We have to strengthen our Barangay Disaster Risk, Barangay Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Committees. We have a lot of challenges on the ground. Why don't, why don't we have this immediate assistance? Because of data. Uh, there are who have the honest data, but sometimes it's bloated. It goes down and up, all right? So we, we really need a lot of people working on the ground. We have the passion to work. We have the passion to help the people because we truly believe this is our mission. We have the joint memorandum circular of the DBM, Civil Service Commission, the ALJ, I guess. But that needs to be reviewed. So I would like to agree with the good senators here that we ought to know because we are on the ground really working day and night, helping these people who are in need of our services. But we don't know what happened to the Sunset Review or the Public Act 10121. And I guess the Association of Local Disaster Risk Reduction Management Officers and the Republic of the Philippines had already stated, stated our position in the sunset, during the sunset review. So I think we, we ought to know in order for us to be strengthened. In terms of resiliency, yes, there's a need for us to be resilient, for our people to be resilient. There's a need to enhance, to level up capabilities of communities and lessen their vulnerabilities. And we need all these agencies, national line agencies, to hold hands together so that we can really achieve the RR resilience in the Philippines. Um, much as we could do more, but there are only a handful of, as mentioned by Sir Solidum a while ago, we need technical disaster managers. 
passionate people who have really been working on the ground. This is a challenge to all local chief executives because in the local government units, they're the ones that are the decision makers and there should be that appreciation of what is DRRM. Thank you, thank you, and I guess that's the only thing I could May say I at this point in time. Uh, uh, Ms. Foronda, sir. Uh, Foronda, yeah. How much disconnect is there between the needs of uh, yes, sir. the needs of the local government units and the support extended by the national government? As clearly pointed out by Dr. Lagmay Kanina, you only have to ask the local government uh, you, officials, uh, yes, even sir. the the uh, the people yes, there, sir. to yes, know sir. that there's really a disconnect between the support being extended by the national government and the needs of the local government units. And based on your own experience, ang po, how much disconnect is there? Specifically in our region, in Region 12, we are strolling working with the N with the RDRRMC. Because in terms of capacity development, which is a part of the preparedness, it is the Office of Civil Defense 12 are really capacitating us. In fact, if we are not technically knowledgeable, if we are not in the province of Cotabato trained of this DRRM or DRR management, I guess we're not able to make it. So I don't think there's such thing as disconnect, but it is a matter of really enhancing our unify our efforts more on coordination and collaboration. I talagang I intensify lang po siya, sir, because we already have the DRRM mechanisms. In the province, we immediately activated, level, uh, raised the level of alertness to, to red. Then we activated our emergency operations center. Nandun po ang lahat ng response clusters. That's why we were able to make it because of the help of all this. Uh, national line agencies. Talagang i-enhance lang siya. I would like to also comment, no ma'am, I would like to reinforce yung sinabi ni Senator Sakanina. Now we have to go back where we came from, the RA 10121. Then from there, we will be able to see what else we ought to do. Because doon po sa DDR, pagkakaintindi ko kanina, it will be in the regional level. If I, if, uh, uh, tama po ako, regional level. But working on the ground are the local government units and the BDRRM committees. Before I recognize uh, Yosek Mafago, uh, tanong na rin si Ms. Maridel. Uh, Barbin, kasi barangay ang level ninyo, no? Uh, ano experience sa barangay level? Magandang hapon po. Uh, bilang frontliner po ng barangay, dahil ito po yung smallest form ng government, at kami po ang nasa community Kami po ang 24 hours nakaharap sa mga tao. So, uh, i-side-side ko lang po yung practices namin bilang sa DRR na nag na po namin sa kanila. Uh, tinuruan po nila kami ng Barangay Contingency Plan kung saan po nakabuo kami ng Barangay Disaster Committee. Uh, hindi lang po barangay level yon Kasama po namin ang mga volunteer colloc leaders, ang mga community levels po dahil we train din po Kung paano po yung pinag-aralan namin sa barangay level, ibinaba po namin sa kanila yon, So, part po sila na aming community uh, DRR na sa ganun po, every time na may darating po na disaster, connected po sila sa barangay. Ang barangay Potrero po kasi is along the Tulian River, kung saan po may typhoon at babaksak po ang napalakas na ulan, magkakaroon po talaga ng flooding sa amin. So, Kung hindi po namin may educate ang mga tao at may papaliwanag sa kanila ng, ang, ang, ang pagkakaroon po ng preparation, mitigation, ng, prepar, uh, ng, ng mga pag-aaral po tungkol po sa disaster, lahat po kami parang walang mangyayari. So ngayon po, dahil po part sila ng ating barangay disaster, once po na may typhoon, uh, may mga COVID-19 po kami, Bawat po rock leader po, part po sila ng aming warning committee and communication committee. Uh, lagi po kaming naka, nakikinig sa pag-asa sa mga radios. Doon po kami nagbe-base kung ang darating po bang ulan ay ganito po kalakas, ganito po kadami. Nang sa ganun po, napre-prepare po namin yun sa community. And one, one thing din po, uh, na, sa isa pong mitigation na ginagawa po namin, part po nun ay ang solid waste management. RA 9003, 
kung saan po meron kaming 40 collectors around Barangay Potrero, kung saan, uh, Potrero po is Malabon, kung saan po, opo, <laughs> meron po kaming segregation at source. Sa bahay pa lang po, kailangan po nakasegregate na po ang basura. Uh, sa bahay pa lang po, hiwalay na yung biodegradable na kung saan po dinadala po namin sa ang, aming materials recovery facilities na sa ganyan po magagamit po namin sa composting. Alam po natin na ang barangay po namin ay isa po sa binabaha lagi. Katabi po namin sila Senator Gatchalian, ang barangay Marulas. Magkapit bahay po kami. So binabaha po kami lagi. Kaya dati po, uh, ang, ang Tulyahan River po ay puro po basura, tiba po sir. Pero ngayon po dahil sa ginagawa po nating clean up at sa ginagawa po naming uh, project sa, sa solid waste, nababawasan po yung basuran lumulutang sa mga ilog. So, doon po, nagkakaroon tayo ng mitigation. Uh, nababawasan po yung mga basura nagkaklag sa mga kanal, sa mga esteros. Ganyan din po, papunta po ng ilog. At pagdating po sa disaster, do, kapag wala pong calamity, disaster na dumarating, we take it po wow, na makapag-train po kami ng bawat purok leaders, ng purok members, nagtatrain po kami ng disaster preparedness. Nagtatrain din po kami ng fire Nagtitrain po, opo, binibigyan po namin sila ng drill regarding sa fire kasi alam po natin na vulnerable po yung mga bahay na yari sa mga light materials. Vulnerable din po sa disaster ang, ang mga PWD, mga seniors, mga women and children. So part po sila sa aming uh, DRRRMC. So sa kanila po kami kumukuha ng mga kaalaman kung ano po yung dapat namin gawin para po matulungan namin sila pagdating po ng disaster. Okay, okay. Mr. Chair. So, sa Potrero po, nag-paradigm shift na kayo. Ang <laughs> emphasis nyo na do sa prevention and mitigation. Na. Yes po, kasi mas na maganda kayo. po yung prevention and mitigation. Nasa ganun po, may iwasan po natin mga sako nang darating. Sa mga engagements nyo sa mga ibang uh, counterparts ninyo, uh, pwede nyo sabihin na microcosm kayo nung ano? Yes nung ibang po. barangay? Uh, Baka kayo lang yan. <laughs> Hindi po, sa, sa, sa ibang barangay naman po ng barangay Malabon, is ginagawa po lahat ang ano. Not only Malabon, sa, yes. sa Batangas, uh, ganyan na active yung barangay ninyo. Mr. Chair, yeah. let, let, let ay, us okay. uh, allow him to respond muna. Uh, your Honor, sa Batangas po ay uh, nestrengthen din po namin yung barangay disaster uh, risk reduction management committee. At uh, actually, ginawa pa rin po inorganize namin into organizations. Hindi pa po lahat-lahat, pero nag-start na po kami. Also, the local DRM officers of each LGU may organize uh, association. May bayanihan system po kami. Kaya uh, naging responding nga po namin sa evacuation uh, during uh, Taal Volcano eruption ay uh, naging mabilis. At gusto ko, ko po sanang i-inform po ang chamber na Yun pong 8 to 10,000, let's say 8,000 na po dahil uh, sabihin na po nating uh, 8,000. Noon pong ginagawa namin ang contingency plan po for evacuation ng mga nasa, nasa isla. Hindi po namin papagtama how long will it take na makataka sila kapag sumabog ang vulkan. Considering yung pagtabog po sa akin constantly news actually doon nung araw na yon, nag po ang alert level 1 to 2 nung around uh, past 1 o'clock and then 4 o'clock po I raised into level 3. Tumawag po ako sa Municipal of Balete. Past 4, naka-evacuate na po ang dahol barangay of Kalawit. And then, uh, mag-aalas 6, naka-evacuate na po yung Talisay. And past 6, naka-evacuate na po yung dalawang barangay na sa Nicolas. So, uh, nakita ko po yung nagbunga yung training namin through the help of PBOX, through the help of the government of Belgium na nagkaroon ng 4-year na study kasama po kami yung mga drills natin, the, the cooperation of the barangays in that particular area. So, hindi ko po maisip pero nangyari, wala po kaming casualty sa Taal Volcano Eruption. Yun po ang nangyari po, Your Honor. Thank you po. Senator Marcos. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. 
Ibig ko lang sumagot bilang gobernador, may hangover pa ako at bagong-bago pa lang ako sa Senado. Doon sa tanong po at uh, sinasabi ni uh, Ma'am Porondo ng Cotabato, sa Ilocos Norte, nagtatag na kami ng Provincial Resiliency Council mulat sa Paul at hinayaan naman kami ng DBM na magkaroon ng tatlong item. So it's a permanent fixture all year round and uh, the council includes the provincial director sa PNP at uh, pati yung mga SK na harness na po namin para ikalat yung balita dahil napakabilis nila mag-sitex at mag-Facebook. Uh, yung tanong ni Chairman na napaka-importante tungkol sa disconnect, sa totoo lang, doon sa pre-disaster, sasabihin ko na 50% ang tulong ng national government kasi mabilis yung armed forces, mabilis yung PNP. Pero kung tutuusin, dapat nauna pa yung DA at yung public works, i-assess yung mga lugar na tinatamnan na hindi angkop doon sa sitwasyon. At dapat sana yung public works, yung critical infrastructure, may x-ray ika nga ng structural integrity ng bawat building na importante. Doon sa response, wala po akong masabi kasi talaga naman yung OCD mabilis at magagaling. Yung post-disaster, eto po yung talagang sobrang palpak. Kita naman natin na hindi talaga maigi. Yung mga rinerequest namin pagkatapos ng bagyo, three years nakapending pa rin. Uh, three years yung mga kalye, yung mga... Yung mga uh, Uh, irigasyon, ang tagal-tagal. At masasabi ko sa Tacloban, may personal knowledge po yung chair natin, six and a half years, wala pa rin housing yung mga victims ng Yolanda. Uh, Senator Risa. Thank you, Mr. Ch ah. Si Yosek Mapago muna, and then Senator Risa. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, your honors, thank you for this opportunity. Sir, three points lang. Uh, I support yung previous uh, statement ni Senator Gachalian plus si Madam Poronda. Kasi sir, right now, in the current uh, setup or situation, pag may bagong local government exec chief executive, napapalitan yung ano sir, eh, yung kanyang local uh, uh, RDS. Yes, opo. And in the case of the recent uh, earthquake in Makilala, bago lang yung kanyang local ano, uh, DRRMC officer. Hindi niya alam yung plan and a plan, all local government units must have a plan. At yung plan na yan, it's a uh, living document yan. Ibig sabihin, nare-rehearse mo yan, then ina-update mo, ina-assess mo. So, so habang nare-rehearse mo yan, uh, nakikita mo yung may weakness or may flow or may gaps, kinokorek mo. Yes, sir. And then, tama rin yung sabi ni Secretary Anyo kanina, uh, suguro ang gagawin lang, kung hindi, uh, kasi ang nakikita lang natin, Parang standalone yung plano ng bawat local government unit. Dapat yan, magplano siya, meron siya. But kung inter-barangay, kung dalawang barangay si involved, dapat may plano yung munisi municipal for two or three or even uh, uh, bigger number of barangays. In like manner, pag dalawang municipalities ang involved, alam ng probinsya. And dalawang probinsya, alam ng region. So ganun ang setup. Sa... OCD kasi sir, up to regional lang yung kanilang uh, opisina. So wala silang probinsya. Ang kanila doon yung provincial uh, uh, DRRMC. Yun ay subject to the appointment of uh, a, a governor. Yes sir. Uh, talag section 15. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Andyan, yes, section 15. Uh, so sir, uh, those are the two points. And then the more important one is uh, the secretary or the department of National Defense supports yung creation ng uh, a new department or new department or even an authority. Pero sir, if OCD will be removed from uh, the department, uh, we suggest that we will have another bureau, uh, perhaps uh, one that will also train uh, um, yung mga, lalo na mga, ano sir, mga reservists namin. Kasi as of now, uh, our reservists medyo ano, backburner sila in terms of even support. So, uh, kung meron kaming bureau yan, pag alis nila, sila yung pwede namin gamitin with funding and all. Gagamitin namin pag may pangailangan during disasters, calamities. Si right now, sir, ang nagagamit natin regular members. So, nadidistract sila sa operational aspect ng defense and security. Uh, even in terms of yung mga, mga, mga gamit, sir, ah, ngayon pa lang kami nag ano, ng SADR. For example, sa Seaburn, sir, nasa third horizon lang yung Seaburn na inaano namin ngayon. Eh, yung, 
sa pang uh, react, uh, pang ano pang uh, Uh, address sa threat ng uh, chemical, uh, biological, radiological, and even nuclear ano, sir, uh, disaster. Like itong uh, pagdating ng uh, novel coronavirus. So, yan ay pinag-usapan namin yesterday pa, sir, sa, sa, ano namin, sa meeting namin. So, uh, those are the things, sir, makapacitate lang, sir, yung local uh, government units. We strengthen them, we capacitate them. Kasi sila naman talaga yung first responders. Uh, pag hindi kaya ng munisipyo, nandiyan yung probinsya and then region, for example, kung mer or national na, sir. Uh, so, yun lang po, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. With Just the nice. permission of um, Senator Antivar. Since nabanggit niya na ho yung mga asset, um, at the moment ho, uh, for example, yung, kasi I remember after nung Yolanda, during the budget deliberation, Mr. Chair, parang lumabas yung uh, ND, NDRRMC that time, wala atang sat phone or dalawang sat phone na hindi pa ata umaandar. So ngayon ho, after ilang years na din yung Yolanda experience natin, how, how prepared are we in terms of assets? For example, yung, um, um, yung mga helicopter natin for evacuation or nadagdagan na ho ba yung C-130 natin? Uh, even itong sat phones. Kasi ngayon na nakikita ko sa mga LGUs, magaganda na yung uh, meron na ho sila yung parang tent na nilalagay nila sa loob ng uh, evacuation centers. At the national level, ho ba? Meron ho bang ganong asset? Ma'am, I can only speak for uh, the department or even the armed forces of the Philippines. Kasi bawat unit ng armed forces of the Philippines depende sa level mo. Halimbawa, battalion, it is one company that's that can be... Uh, Uh, deployed for HADR. So kung sa isang brigade, may isang batalyon. So that's uh, on standby. Ang nangyayari kasi ngayon, sometimes if they're on operation, yung sa talagang uh, trabaho nila, pag may crisis situation or disaster na ganyan, napupull out sila. So, you know, uh, so nadi-disrupt yung, ano rin namin eh, yung operations namin, yung uh, mission accomplishment. That's why, Uh, over the years, ganun na nangyari eh. Meron kami yung nasa momentum na then biglang hinto. Yes, and then, in fact, even those deployed here in Luzon, they, they are redeployed in Mindanao. So, so maraming ano rin, maraming factor. But, of course, uh, by priority naman yung ano natin eh, yung, uh, yung needs natin. So, if the national uh, uh, leadership says ito yung mauna, so we, we, we followed the, the lead of the, uh, the commander-in-chief. So, Uh, may mga nasa modernization naman kami uh, right now we I think we have uh, five C-130 aircraft yeah. uh, so yeah, uh, uh, sir eh, meron de Ilan nasa deadline, deadline yata, sir, nung minsan sir na I think nung budget namin there yeah. was only one operational that time out of the five sir eh. so but uh, undergoing naman repairs yung mga ito sir so And you are still uh, building up our resources, sir, our, our equipment, including yung sa Seaburn, sir. Yeah. Yusek David, and then uh, Secretary Anya. Sir, uh, <laughs> these are huge, uh, <laughs> huge mission of the Secretary of National Defense. One is national defense, and the other is disaster being the chairman. So it will be unburdened, the secretary, and uh, it will uh, concentrate on various issues as part of defense. Say, for example, BFA on... Western Philippine Sea, terrorism. So it will embarden the Secretary of National Defense. Now, why is it the Secretary of National Defense is, is the chairman of the Army? It is because it is the elements of the armed forces can quickly respond. It is very easy, or it is uh, very easy for to respond in any disaster if the department, the secretary is the chairman. Will it reduce the that capability of the of any department or any authority i think sir uh, we the our soldiers are professionals our officers are professional in case of an emergency we will have the same response even if the secretary will not be will no longer be the chairman of any disaster so uh, again sir uh, this is part of the government uh, tasking missions It will, as Secretary Go, uh, Senator Goss have said, this will concentrate the, Depart the Secretary of National Defense on, on defense uh, matters and security matters. It will, be best, it will be best for us in the national defense. Thank you very much.
Good. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, on the institutionalization that uh, was mentioned by uh, Mamporonda and uh, I think uh, Senator Marcos, Senator Gachalian, uh, we are actually institutionalizing because uh, we required the LGU to put the LDRRMO or the Local Disaster Risk Reduction Management Officer as a plantilla. In fact, in the last SGLG, 12 LGUs did not qualify because they failed to designate a permanent LDRRMO. So we want that all LGUs will have this LDRMMO and they will be career position so that if there is a change of administration, they will not be uh, relieved, transferred, or replaced. Now, on the role of uh, the DLG and the PNP, as you can see in recent developments, uh, you saw the uh, bigger participation of the Philippine National Police, especially in the uh, lockdown and mass evacuation in Tal Volcano, because we understand that the AAP has a bigger uh, mission that cannot be uh, disrupted. Now, on the uh, uh, leveling field, I think uh, there's no need to wait for the disaster because we have the LGSF and we have the assistance to municipalities. I think we can use that as a leveling field in uh, preparedness and resiliency. We can put uh, funds to municipalities to advantage disadvantaged municipalities that are vulnerable to hazards and disasters. There's no need to wait for the uh, disaster. I'm always fighting for a bigger budget for the assistance to municipalities, giving, giving premium to those uh, uh, municipalities that are in the Typhoon Belt and within the vicinity of Volcano and uh, probably within the Ring of Fire. So maybe we, we, with those uh, measures, we can increase our resiliency or resilience. And then uh, we all agree that there is a need to elevate the NDRMC either into a department or uh, an authority. It's a matter of weighing the advantages and the disadvantages. But as I see it, mas maraming disadvantage kapag uh, department. Like for example, there will be some uh, conflict in the, in the law, overlapping of functions in the local government code, section five, one of the powers and functions of BILG is to formulate plans, policies, and programs which will meet local emergencies arising from natural and man-made disasters. If we have a different department, then two department, departments will be supervising and overseeing the local government units. Yes, that's all, um, Mr. Chair. Senator Risa, and then uh, can we recognize first the OST? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, we would like to reiterate that uh, Pag-asa, PBOX, and the whole of the OST will carry out its mandates and responsibilities, whatever the structure will be. But uh, we would also like to register our position that if there will be a new department, uh, it, we would like the our agencies, uh, Pag-asa and uh, PBOX, to be with the OST because basically they are science and research uh, agencies. Secondly, I would like to repeat what I recommended to the President uh, during the meeting at, uh, in Batangas, that the local government units should uh, uh, all should have already new approved land use plans which are hazard sensitive. And finally, just an announcement that on March 12 to 14, the OST will have an, an ex exhibition of innovations for disaster pre pre medication, mitigation, preparedness, and response. This will be uh, at the World Trade Center. This is purely an exhibition of technologies. So, and dito na rin si Josek Janet, with the indulgence of Senator Risa. Na notice namin, ano, science entails research. Eh, yung science naman, lalaking tulong, especially during disasters. Napansin lang namin, bakit we only appropriate 0.4% on the average. Ito, oh, on research and development. Kaya kami, without even discussing matters with DOST, I see to it that uh, during amendments, on my own uh, initiative, I see to it that they augment their budget on research and development. Bakit... Um, Policy ba ito ng uh, national government na napakaliit lang ng minuscule? Imagine average of 0.4% of the entire budget. Yun lang ina-allocate natin, ina-appropriate 
for research. Ang dami natin magagawa kung uh, ma-enhance natin yung research and development, I tell you. Huawei, for example, ah, yung uh, gross uh, revenues nila, 15% of their earnings, gross, ah, goes back to research and development. Of course, business yun, pero government, pwede na sabihin, parang business din eh. Mag-invest tayo sa research and development, Ah, senso tayo, di ba? So, probably sa next budget call, baka naman pwedeng, not for anything, ano? Ang liit ng budget ng DOST lagi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon po sa lahat. So, we will take note of that, sir. Um, well, given the, given the circumstances that are, uh, the recent circumstances, when we were doing our executive review board, uh, review last, for 2020, sir. Uh, that is one of the items that we have discussed already. Kaya lang po kasi sa, lak, sa dami, sir, ng priority, pinaprioritize, minsan talaga, nalalaglag siya. And, and even considering the, even considering the utilization and, but but we, we don't discount, sir, the importance and we'll take note of that. And Yun, we'll importante consider. siguro, konting ano lang, Siguro kung mabot lang ng 1% o 2%, masaya na yung DOST, masaya na yung PBOX, masaya na, masaya na yung pag-asa. No? Yes, uh, yes, lang, Mr. Janet, Chair. Tinaasan din naman po namin for 2020. Mababa pa rin lang if you look yeah. into the yeah, grand scheme of eh. Yung uh, 2019, 0.46%. No? Bumaba pa nga, oh. naging 0.39% na lang sa... Sa 2020. Yes, sir, as to the percentage, yeah. to the rate, but as, as to the nominal, yeah, tumaas nominal po siya. Tumaas. Opo. Kasi tumataas naman yung budget eh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes, Mr. Senator Chair. Senator Risa, she recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, tulad ng lahat ng comments ni Sec Anyo tungkol sa, of course, uh, LGUs, na-appreciate ko yung comments din uh, just recently ni Yusek Mapago also about the critical role of local government units and therefore really, really appreciate, Mr. Chair, yung presence at inputs ni na Ma'am Foronda at yung Ms. Barbin at siyempre si Sir Castro uh, from the three different areas. Kasi gusto ko sanang uh, itanong uh, kanina tungkol sa proposed department. Alternatively, dahil three cabinet members, I think, around the table have expressed at least openness sa authority, no? alternatively, kung uh, magkakaroon ba ng articulation of local NDRRMC councils, kung sakaling authority ang itayo, and what would be the role of the LGUs uh, under that authority. Um, and baka pwedeng may sneak peek si Vice Admiral Pama sa atin, if there were such proposed amendments nung technical working group about um, the, the role of the LGUs and the local NDRRMC councils uh, proposed authority. Uh, that's number one. And number two, lastly for me, Mr. Chair, yung primary role din ng mga civil society organizations under, for example, the regime of an authority. What are the spaces and mechanisms for people's participation, CSO participation in the local dynamics of climate disaster governance? And para lastly, uh, Yusek Janet, how do we ensure participation even in budget planning and implementation of the local? Din po sa akin, uh, Mr. Chair, from NDRRMC, from uh, Vice Admiral Pama, at kung meron pang gustong idagdag ang DILG and uh, DBM about LGUs and uh, civil society organizations. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Risa. Senator Wynn. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, uh, pasalamat lang ako kay Secretary Anyo for giving his uh, honest uh, opinion on the creation of the disaster uh, uh, department of disaster resilience. I think no better, no other person is more qualified and better to express his opinion other than the person on the ground, no? which is the DILG. And uh, my view, Mr. Chair, is, alam niyo, may mga fundamental flaws so itong in the RMC law. It's not a bad law, but my fundamental flaws. For example, in Section 12, uh, there shall be established an LDRRMO in every province, city, and municipality. Ang fundamental flaw, sino mag-ahead ng office? No? And that's where si Yusek uh, Mapago mentioned earlier, 
na papalit-palit no? because there is no person in charge. It, it assumes that the mayor, the governor is in charge, but the mayor and governor are, are doing many things no? uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, talaga nangyayari ho na pag, pag uh, palit ho ng mayor and governor, iba rin ho yung makakausap doon because it's not institutionalized. And this brings me to the comment of uh, Dr. Solidum na dapat ho may disaster risk managers. Because nga wala nga sa batas, wala nga nagsasabi na sino mag-head nitong office na ito. No? It's a fundamental flaw because on the ground, sino talagang hahanapin. No? And I think uh, these are the things that we need to fix in the law. But my view is the law is, uh, is, is adequate in terms of uh, moving the local governments to the right direction. It's really the capability that is lacking, the funds that is lacking. In fact, kami nga ni Senator Bina is talking na maybe we can set up a fund na doon po sa mga 5th, 4th, 3rd class municipalities na kulang po instead of a general support fund but a disaster resiliency fund specifically for LGUs. No? Doon po sa mga na-declare sa geohazard zones. And I have another question ho kay Yusek uh, Mapago. Kailan ho, nag kailan ho tayo nagkaroon ng uh, ng bagong geohazard map. No? Uh, meron ba ho tayo? I, I know this should be updated regularly. No? No? DNR, sir, ang pinaka uh, yan main agency na... But when, when, when was it updated? And when was it cascaded to the local government units? Because eh, may, mga, may mga questions ako. Like for example po, in Taal, alam naman natin na Siguro, even the layman will know, ito ay part ng geohazard zone. No? Bakit mayroon hong nakatira ho doon? In fact, hindi lang ho nakatira, bakit mayroon pong mga turista umaakyat ho ng crater? No? Diba? Common sense will dictate na pag ito ay delikadong lugar, dapat walang nakatira at walang any commercial activity. Dahil anytime, it can, it can uh, erupt. So my point of the matter here is, there's also a gap between the determination of which areas are dangerous, which areas are part of the geohazard zone, and also cascading it down to the local governments. Eh kung nas cascade ho sa local governments, at hindi ho nakukanig yung mga local governments, eh liable ho sila doon. In fact, in this case, liable ho ang barangay at liable po ang, uh, ang municipality for allowing commercial operations in that area. Meron ho akong story, in fact, um, ang UNICEF po, uh, nagpadala ho ng uh, team to Valenzuela to fix, to partner with us in our child-friendly program. Ang request lang ho ng apat na foreigners, pumunta ho sa Taal Volcano. Pumunta nga ho sila nung Sunday of that, of that uh, eruption. Buti na lang ho, nagkulang ng oras, pabalik na ho sila uh, one hour before it erupted. But my point of the matter there is, uh, we allow this type of commercial operations to that area well, in fact, kung pinayagan ho silang umakyat ho doon, o kung umakyat ho sila doon, nagkataon na nagka-problema, mas malaking problema ho tayo. No, my, my point is, there's also a gap between national uh, geohazard maps, national declarations, cascading down to the local level. And this is where we have to, my, my, my view on this is, we really need to empower the local government, we need to capacitate them, and we need to educate them because they're the first line of defense and they respond very, very quickly in an event of a disaster. That's all, Mr. Chair. Senator, Win, Senator Binay, uh, meron lang ko upcoming meeting at 1 o'clock and I'm always uh, on time, so we will have to suspend. Very quickly, may response si uh, Jose Calad, but we will have to suspend before 1, ah. Yes, sir. Oh, sige. On uh, J.O. Hazard Map, sir, Tatlo yung pinanggagalingan yan eh, P-Bulk, sa MGB, at sa Kapag-asa. And uh, always their products are disseminated to the local government unit. Sen Mr. Chair. Senti? Mr. Chair. Pwede pong makisingit. Sige po. Lahat po ng tinanong nyo, nasa batas yan. Kaya ho lahat ng mm, sinisimula natin ay risk assessment. So, yun pong mapa na nabanggit po ni Yusek Halad, even at the national or local level, ginagawa po yan. 
Uh, sa tanong po ni Senator Gatchalian, bakit merong activity, bakit may nakatira, I think I mentioned earlier, sana yan ho ang tingnan natin, bakit po yung Batangas, ang kanyang plan with due respect to Batangas province, bakit po ang plano niya included ang mga aktividades na ganyan? How did they spend their QRF? How did they spend their uh, 70% preparedness fund? Tanyo po, siguro, ang... Uh, it's a question of enforcement. No? Sa Yolanda nangyari, naglagay ng uh, mitigation. Ano? Talagang pang storm surge. Eh, kamukat-mukat mo, may bahay doon sa labas nung, ano, nag, doon pa rin nagtayo ng bahay. Tama so it's a matter po. of enforcement. Eh. Tama po kayo. And most of it, it's on the local government uh, unit, local government special. Why do they allow these people to be exposed to hazards? Ano? Eh, may lesson learned na nga, painful lesson. Pagkatapos, papayag, naglagay ka na nga ng natawag dito. Yung guma doon, jay ka eh. And yet, after a while, nung natapos yung, ano tawag doon? Yung barrier, oh. Elevated road. Meron pa sila yung parang yung uh, jackstone. Pagkatapos, ang bahay na doon sa tumawid pa rin. So, law enforcement ito. So, Chair, siguro before we suspend lang, for your submission lang, kasi kanina napag-usapan ho yung Batangas, can we just request an update for submission na lang ho? Doon naman sa plana natin for na, doon sa mga na-earthquake sa Davao, sa Cotabato. Okay, two minutes, ha? One minute lang, sir. Sir, I was in Davao last Friday, so I met with the OCD 12 and 11. They're starting their PDNA already. Uh, sa Cotabato, sa Davao provinces. So, hopefully matapos maaga yon, they can submit to OCD main, sir. And to address the gap, sir, ang sabi ko naman doon is, uh, kung may ma-identify ng projects for rehabil for uh, uh, implementation, eh mag-submit na ng project proposal. And there was indeed uh, one project submitted to us, which we sent back to the region for validation. And that is on the water system damage uh, by the earthquake. Mr. Chair, for submission na lang din po, hindi pa kasi uh, nasagot uh, ni Vice Admiral Pama kung ano po yung nakita nila dun sa proposed uh, recommended authority na papel at articulation ng local NDRRMC councils at LGUs in general. For submission po, and kay Yusek, Janet din po sana for submission, yung people's participation po sa planning ng Local Disaster Resilience Fund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, having said that, this uh, meeting is uh, suspended. So we, we might meet again. Thank you. Salamat po.